Okay, guys, we are live. So for those listening at home, welcome to the Dungeon Musings YouTube channel. My name is Kevin Madison, and I will be your friendly Dungeon Master this evening. Well, actually, I guess I'll be your friendly Game Master. Because you see, today we are carrying on with our ongoing campaign playing. Astonishing Swordsmen and Sorcerers of Hyperborea 2nd Edition. Soon to be defunct. Uh, and with me today uh, are the stars of the Reavers of Tule campaign. I'll go the order I've got you guys on the screen here. Why don't you tell us who you are, who you're playing, and what level are you currently? Uh, first up, we've got Robert. Hi, uh, I'm Robert, and I'm playing Sard Luxande, who is a fourth level cryomancer. Oh. I learned something too. Uh, we, before we went live, we mentioned that I was on uh, vacation. So I went back home, and uh, while I was home, I saw a, uh, what do you call it, um, some um, throat singers from Iqaluit, from one of the, uh, uh, what do you call it, northern provinces in um, in Canada, and That's I cool. guess it's not, Inuit is not actually the correct pronunciation, it's Inuit. It's French. I've always wondered. Yeah. So uh, Inuit is, is the correct pronunciation for uh, yes. for that. Uh, yeah. So you learn something every, you know, every day. Yeah. Uh, excellent. Uh, next up is Will. Not Ennui, no. Will. I'm playing <laughs> Amar. <laughs> he is a Sikh monk from um, 18th century Earth, and I am finally 7th level. Very nice. Awesome. Now, is this first time at 7th level, or is this your second time? No, I think... <clears throat> I'm pretty sure I was 6th level, and I was almost... Getting ready to go to seven, and then had the level drain. Brutal. That level drain is no joke. Um, no. Last, but certainly not least, is Carl. Hello, I'm Carl. I'm playing Iphigenia Acontadoris. She is sixth level. She is an Amazonian warlock. And right now, she's kind of unconscious. <laughs> yeah. So where are well i guess first off uh guys why don't you tell carl what happened last time we have two helpful visual aids on uh, the screen there i guess it was a month ago yeah <laughs> so. i know it's like okay i know i'm trying to remember were we actually in that fight so you guys in had like the temple complex yeah like the, the last thing that i think that uh carl you were here for was the fight with the crocodile god where you guys yeah. Yeah. nearly died <laughs> it's gonna be kind of deja vu here um, yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh so we escaped the complex under the temple or the caves under the temple um by uh um Zard Mozart found a staff of time, which happened to be fairly useful, especially once his player actually realized what um, telekinesis does. Uh, <laughs> he was thinking it did something else. Um, and so basically we escaped um, and met up with the winged ones. Um, I, I'm going to completely mispronounce their names, but they're on the screen. Yazk and Saraxa, mm -hmm. um, and they turned out to be friendly-ish. Um, they, they, they are against, definitely against the crocodile god, and they um, took us back to their Irie, Irie, whatever, um, with, with a little bit of a, um, discussion. In other words, people who cannot fly aren't supposed to be there. Um, we were told we had to show that we could fly, which was not going to work well. Uh, and uh, we convinced them to, uh, we convinced them that we were worthy potential allies by describing our, our um, fight with the crocodile god. But of course we were defeated and they offered to provide some aid and uh we found ourselves in a dream a dreamscape mm. where we're now fighting the crocodile god again um, but it appears like this zard is thinking this is like a tactic like it's trying to figure out correct tactics to he's kind of treating this as as uh learning some tactics that we can use to uh defeat the thing 
and two of and these guys, Yazk and Saraxa, are there with us. Now there was a reason that they uh, cast you into this psychic landscape as well, too. Do you recall why that was? Uh, I'm trying to remember. Amar? Yeah, I'm thinking. It actually um, was a reason relating to Amar. Uh, did, did it have to do with... Because didn't they detect what had happened to me? One of yes. their... Like their village shaman or whatever had detected what had happened to me when um, I got left behind. Mm -hmm. in a near-death state. And so this... Is this like a purification ritual, perhaps? Uh, they right. did mention that they, there was um, part of it that was left with you, right? They, they recognized <laughs> yes. you as a traveler. Right. And the idea was for... They thought was that it was for you to spread this uh, wherever you go. So... Ify, yep. you are at full hit points. Okay. And let me show you here. You also have your full spells uh, restored to you. Let me bring you to where we are. I'm going to switch to something a little more violent as far as the music is concerned. Let's see here. This, 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 this. Where are you guys? Yeah. There we go. Giant iffy. Ah! There we go. Small iffy. Mm -hmm. All right, so you're down there. What you can see as sort of your... You don't have a recollection of how you got here. Um, but what you can tell... Uh, or what you can see is Amar and Sard, uh, that, that new um, ally that you found in the bowels of the uh, Temple of the Toad. Uh, they seem to be facing off against this enormous crocodilian flying thing, spirit thing. And uh, where are we here? Yeah, here we go, C-Tech. Uh, you have your full complement of spells back. Whatever you had prepped to yesterday, all of those are back with yeah. you again. And guys, okay. let's switch up some music here to something more violent. And let's roll initiative. Okay, let's see here. Let's see here. I think this one. Nope, that one. Let's see. I know we had a plan. Oh, and you might have also notice that your allies are moving somewhat faster than they usually do. Oh yeah, right. You guys used to uh, uh, haste on. Uh, was it on everybody? Yes. Okay. Uh, so including the million ones. Hmm. Okay. Okay, here we go. All right, guys, let's 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 roll some initiative. All right, come on. All right, so um, Carl, you were away last time. Let's start off with uh, E rolling initiative. Uh, so. Um, everyone decide. Oh, what's your holding? Everyone enter in what you're doing. Yes. Slowly coming back to me. <laughs> well, I'm like this far back, right? Uh, so, you are, yeah. Okay. All right, so I'm moving. You've only yeah. just entered the uh, psychic landscape. Oh, uh, we got some uh, Chopin playing in the back there. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, you've got. Um, uh, whatever spells you had memorized uh, previously, you have access to those once again. Okay. Alrighty. So then, um, we got everyone in. Let's all watch no, as Carl. I'm, I'm almost there. 
Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, I saw your name there already. <laughs> not on we. <laughs> yeah, my bad. <laughs> I thought that was your action. I, I'm not feeling uh, yeah. sorrowful, <laughs> you know, hopelessness. And yeah, I think that's all else. Yeah. Nice. Carl, beat my three. Mm. Nice. All right. all right, so first up will be Melee. Um, this thing cannot get to... Oh! It's getting close. Uh, next, uh, Magic will be up uh, for Sard. What are you doing, Sard? Um, I'm going to cast Slow from the staff at C-Tech. Okay. Level 11. All right. That's the staffs. So I don't think levels affect okay. uh, saving Smart throws in, in okay. this. Uh, Dispel yeah. Magic is, I think, the only thing that actually... Yeah. Involves any kind of comparison of levels, yep. but let me double check okay. here. Yep, probably not, but I'm very much doubting this will work on it. But okay, I so you've got a saving throw. Well, let's see here. Yeah, he does. His saves are pretty crazy, yep. uh, as is appropriate. Yeah, he made a save, unfortunately. Okay, sorry. Okay, so you um, point the staff sort of towards him. And try to uh, get this thing to go off you can feel the magic just like it shatters as it or dis uh, you know discorporates as it gets close to him it, he is such a primal and uh, powerful creature yes. uh, then we have uh, missile Amar all right so yeah we're gonna hit him with the gun okay um, let's see where are my dice Ooh, I only oh, made one of my saves two. first save I made second save not two. one so <laughs> 10 points of damage from that one and full hey, damage that one. Up. Nice. Yeah. All right. It's roaring around in response to this, you know, ray gun. I mean, shut up at it. Uh, then it is move. Uh, Carl, you're up. Ify, you want to be coming in yeah. here? Yeah. I'm trying to... I guess I come to... And I'm... The last thing I remember is getting... Yeah, Chunked. knocked out. So one, two. You also feel much better. Yeah, that's just crazy. Okay. I, I think I can only move. I move forty, so I can only move twenty. Right? Okay. Uh, yeah, because you're running, right? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, then it is uh, this thing. So <laughs> it's nearly free of that wall, guys. Um. Around you, Carl, is sort of a collapsing version of that temple uh, or something similar with uh, narrow hallways and whatnot. Uh, the flying, um, uh, what do you call it? The Pterodon men, they seem to be, uh, or Pterodon folk, they seem to be fighting um, like kind of a um, hit or miss. Oh, what are they doing this round? Yeah, yeah. I was just sitting there thinking about that. I was like, we needed to declare actions for them, didn't you we? You did, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, they would have been doing melee on my, uh, mine. Mine would have been doing melee. That okay, so they'd have to move in then. Yeah, that is Yaz. Okay. And they have doubled attacks, or how many? Uh, yes, they do. Down, but how many attacks? So they have down? two uh, claws each and one bite each. So give us uh, through their claws. Uh, each of you guys give us. Uh, uh, Will is the other uh, Terradon or Terra Man going in as well? Yes. Kay. Yes. Go ahead and roll each uh, four d twenty, please. Uh, they need. So these are the claws. Mm. Uh, they yep. need a fourteen uh, to hit. Yeah. So you got one, wow. two, oh, three, got three hits for. Oh, none for. All right, so three. Yas can still hit nothing. <laughs> Give us a three d eight roll there, Amar. Three d eight. Okay. Yes, please. Nice. All right, so just hacking away at this thing, tearing, and then you have uh, a bite as well. Oh, two uh, bites. Each you give us uh, two rolls for bites. Hey, that's a lot. Yeah, better. one hit. That's two d six damage. The same. We swapped out. Two d six damage. And then this thing will oh, nice. be able to, with that tail of it, let's see, it's going to try and sweep. Uh, yeah, it's a hit, 16's a hit. Four points of damage, all right. All right, and I'm going to roll randomly 
Uh, one, so evens, it'll be um, Yoxel or, oops, and then the uh, odds will be the other guy. Uh, it is odds, so it's uh, Saraxa. Uh, and then it does, eesh, 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 eesh. Let's see here. Let's see, this is how much damage Saraxa takes. Oh! Ouch. So that mighty going. tail sweeps to the side, and Amar, I think uh, you were controlling Saraxa, right? That's correct. 22 points of damage Good Lord. from that tail slap. Uh, and then it uh, pulls itself free. It'll be able to move at its full rate. All right. Uh, that brings us to the end of round... Oh, sorry, that was phase two is when that would have happened. Uh, so you guys can feel free to move if he can move. Uh, and the other guys have to stay still. All right. All right. All right, guys, so that's the end of round one. We're on to round two. All right, here we go. Uh, everyone decide what you're doing with your round. Let's see here. Oh, it's kind of bad. Uh, okay. I think... So I can move half and then magic, yes. It's been a month, uh... So, I don't know maybe Okay. You guys are doing well. You're picking away at this thing. Yeah. All right. So we got... I think that's everybody. And I'm assuming the... Um, they're either moving or meleeing. Uh, so then... I was going to say... Do we need to put their, like, names in or something? Hmm... For the um if you want i mean i i think we know what phase they're they're acting on so okay i'm not uh, super fussed uh all right yeah, carl then out, I... you should go ahead and beat my four please come on carl yeah no nope. mm. <laughs> <laughs> all right so um i have a melee attack first here uh that tail let me see who it's attacking here uh, it'll be Yazik on uh, evens, odds on Saraxa. Evens this time. So sweeping the tail back the other way. Yazik. <laughs> yeah, I... Yeah, I, I would have hit like an AC minus 10. So, let's see here. Yazik, you take 14 points of damage from that uh, big sweeping tail. <clears throat> and, oh boy. Free. And it's gonna try and bite Amar. What's your AC, Amar? Uh, that's a good question. I think it's still the same it's always been. No. Why did my AC go down? Oh, because I went up a level. Yeah, I'm AC yeah. one now. AC one, awesome. Okay. Oh, unfortunately, this thing has a huge attack rate. Let's see. Unfortunately, Let's see. Let's it's see. Fake goes a one. Fourteen, I hit. Oh boy. Okay, here's the upside. I cannot kill you in one hit. So there's that. <laughs> Let's see how much damage it does as this. Uh, you're not quite, um, you know, doesn't get a full bite off on you. 28 points of damage from your first thing. Now, you guys have three points of Astonishing Fortune. You could spend one of those to ignore that hit. Should we wait until it's a, a kill hit? I don't know, man. 28's a lot. That is a lot, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I, 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 I say negate it. Okay, so we'll go ahead and spin. Okay, so what do we see as you... Control. This thing is, is about see, to... I'm always, what he was going to do, he's going to try and, you know, reposition himself. And yeah. so as he's kind of getting ready to do that, that attack comes in and he sees it just a second before he ha it happens he actually steps into it 
and under it. Mm. Whoa, so he's going to roll over his head. Amazing. Amazing. All right. Two points of Astonishing Fortune left. Uh, then it is... Um, let's see here. Uh, oh, melee was the uh, Yazik and Saraxa. Yep. They stay in the back there. Move, they can continue to harass <clears throat> it. Yeah. Now, this is a low wall attempt. I'm trying to figure out could he, could Yazik get here? I'm just, he can get there physically, but his. No, I can't. Even. Would he be able to fly over the wall to here? Uh, the wall, no, no, because that's, remember, these are, they're not, um, there are ceilings in here. Uh, okay, but, okay. Yeah, and getting, he could probably okay, get there the without incurring attacks of opportunity, Saraxa could get okay. there. Okay, come, come You guys okay with those positions? Yes. Yeah, that's sufficient. Okay. Huh? Go right ahead and make your attacks then, guys. So, claws, uh, 4d20. I hit you one. Need 14 one hit. One Which hit from each of you. So it's one D eight. That's a D eight. For each. Three and six, okay. And Two then bites. bites. Go ahead. Uh, one come hit. On. There you go. <laughs> and then go ahead and roll uh two D six. Yeah, get that big two D six. Come on. Oops, oh, oh no, I saw the sixteen. <laughs> Five. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, it's like, wait a minute, somebody cheated. All right. So there, in spite of getting whacked, they're still, you know, in a, um, almost like a hummingbird, just uh, clawing away and biting at an incredibly fast uh, rate. Uh, then we have, uh, let's see here. Anyone else have melee first phase? No. So we've got missile. Iffy. And I think that's it for first phase. I still have that PDW, right? You do, yeah. Yep, I'm gonna fire three times. Please do. Creature. Do it, do it, do it. Alright, so. Ooh. Nice. One, two, oh, three. Nice. Nice. Ooh. Okay, so it's 12, it's 20, 27. Nice. I mean, this thing is not. It's almost done, but. Okay, so you're opening uh, up on this thing, uh, and it's roaring in response. By, by the way, uh, Carl, um, yeah, I don't think I mentioned this, but keep track of what you use in the dream or dreamscape. You're talking I'm just about counting like it as like I'm using it more. Mm. I know, but Kev said keep, keep track of it separately, right? Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, okay. Okay. So. Uh, then it is uh, magic, which I don't think is anybody. Uh, then it is move. Yeah, so, so I'm just going to back up with three space okay Amar now <clears throat> so I'm technically engaged because he he tried to bite me right yes yeah, right all right so <sighs> would I be able to disengage this turn and then attack next uh no if you're withdrawing you have to that's that's your action okay but I could withdraw and still get my full move from it uh, you know, I think with a withdrawal, you're limited to a third of your movement. Ooh, a third. Well, that's yeah. still not horrible. All right, then let's do that. You could also just dot, like, uh, uh, what is it, defensive attack and then try and make your full move. It gives you a little bit of a bonus to your AC. And remember, you're hasted. Yeah, I know. See, I make, my, my speed is good. Yeah. Um, just getting away is the... Yeah, it's just getting away right now. Mm -hmm. All right. So yeah, let's do that. Let's um try and defensively withdraw there. Okay. Let's see how the fight goes. I roll a four. I miss. Good. So, <sighs> snaps at you. Go ahead and move uh, half All your right, move, so half your hasted move. Yeah, which is. And you've oh, seen how crap. fast this thing is outside of the dream as well, too. Staying in the open area mm -hmm. is kind of a guarantee it's going to be able to reach you. Yeah. Yeah. So I need to get behind the walls again. Okay, and then next up, uh, Sard. Well, did you move already, Sard? Yeah, he moved. Okay. Did you move, Will? Yeah, I'm working on it. 
I'm just counting my spots. <laughs> <laughs> he moves very far. I think I should. Hasted In monk. In fact, I can move there. And nice. Still have left over. Yep. Okay. <laughs> So you go racing in through a gap in the uh, in the wall. Uh, then it is um, top of second phase. Uh, we have melee, which is nobody. Um, we have missile second phase, which is Amar. So. Uh, I made my save. Uh, so that'll oh, be. Well. 17, so that'll be 8. Okay. Just a quick aside, I was watching the original Spider-Man with Tobey Maguire, mm. and the Green Goblin has that little flash bomb that he throws at the shareholders, and it yeah. does the classic flash skeletons. Pattern. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, makes, that, that always, whenever I see something like that, it always makes me think of the ray gun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally. All right. Uh, then uh, we have magic, second phase. Yeah, so um, Sarge is just casting ice armor. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right, uh, and then it is, is um, move second phase, which I think is uh, the winged ones, I guess. And uh, <clears throat> I've already done my melee attacks for the what do you call it um, for C tech. I guess he could move now. Mm. On each of your winged ones, give us one attack of opportunity each. Okay. Uh, come on, roll 20. Nope. There we go. Yep. Uh, I'm assuming it'll be a bite, so give us a 2d6 yeah. damage. And then uh, C Tech will. Oh. <laughs> okay. He loves me. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just—I mean, you're the one who's routinely getting there. I don't think you can reach uh, Sard or Iffy. Uh, so one easy uh, attack. All right, so then we are on to round three. Everyone, uh, declare what you're doing with your round. Oof. I think you lost initiative last time, right? Yeah, yeah so it's off to you, Robert. Next, yeah, we'll just wait till um, everyone declares their Robert, and then... Yep. Yeah. There we go. Oh, and George said he'll be back uh, next session as well. Nice. That'd be cool. Oh, yeah. he missed, he's missed all the fun. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's missing all the great fun. Yeah. Okay, so that everybody. Then, Robert, would you kindly beat? Sorry, my six. Uh, crap. Nope. <laughs> All right. So first, Damn. phase melee. C Tech is gonna try and bite Amar. Of course he is. Yeah, that <laughs> son of a sixteen. So that is a hit. Mm. That is twenty-one points of damage. Okay, I can handle 21. Okay. That uh, puts so, me right at half. Yeah, you are uh, going back as this thing is just trying to smash through. Uh, blocks are falling down from the ceiling as he slams into it and is trying to get at you. Uh, no one else has... Oh, we got winged ones. Yep. Okay, so he had readied an action for when they get into range. So let me just make my melee attack. Uh, evens, that'll be on uh, Yazaka again. Uh, I saw... Uh, so Yazik will take. Hold on. There he is. All right. Uh, so Yazik is going to take fourteen points of damage. Still has two. Wham! Oh man. Okay. Uh, then go ahead and make your attack roll. So four claws. Oops, hold on. He's threw four dice on my head. <laughs> some problems. Oh, that's not That's bad. pretty good. Three hits. Nice. And critical. 3d8. Oh, yeah, critical. 1d6 damage, please. Yeah. Or, well, 1d6. Yep. Okay, that is... Uh, he is a monster, so that is, I think, times two. Let's 
Let's see. So go ahead and roll uh, 2d8 and then roll uh, 1d8. Yep. Please. Eight for that. Damage. Uh, come on. Oh, nice. So nice. 24 total. All right, so he's laying into this thing. Uh, and then, uh, was Saraxa dead? Yeah. Yeah, 14 oh. points. He only had eight left, so that took, takes him to negative six. So he's not Wait. dead dead. <laughs> oh, I didn't realize I took him out last round. Oh, well, these are NPCs, so. Wait. Oh, damn it. Wait, 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 wait um, hold on. You... So he attacked Yazek, just so you know, Will. Th this... This time, or oh, was the last round? Yeah. I thought he attacked me. No, Yazek this turn. Yeah. Oh, my Yazek. bad. Never mind. Yeah, yeah. Woo. Okay. <laughs> he lives to fight another day. <laughs> Magic. Yeah. All you right. don't like your winged one. <laughs> Get out of here. Yeah, so then, is Sarasa yeah, going in? Attacking. Yeah. For shizzle. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, so 46 or 4020. Uh, for another crit. Holy shit. So go, give us a 1d6 roll. Crit. Okay. Wow. Oh, nice. There's your trip damage. Uh, so give us 1d8 oh, and then 1d8, please. Okay. So two points of damage, and then this one will be tripled. <laughs> All right, so. And now we have the bites. Okay, yeah, and go ahead and attack with your bites. Nights. Come on. There one hit, one, one hit from one. each. All right. Go ahead and roll, guys. 2d6 okay. and 2d6. Mm. And there it is. C-Tech <laughs> is downed. Awesome sauce. So as you guys are uh, trying to clear, you know, uh, ra racing away from this, uh, there's a wave of kind of nausea uh, that hits you. And then you awaken. Leave like, there's another here. Yeah. Let's see here. Oh, no. <laughs> yes. Right. Where were we? Here. Where on earth did I leave you guys with? Here. Yeah, there we go. There's Iffy. All right. So you uh, can feel that wave of nausea. Your vision blurs. And then as you recover, you can find that you guys are all once again standing before the, whoever the matriarch or the priestess is of the uh, Terra Man tribe. Uh, she is still sitting on that kind of perch, uh, looking down at you guys. Yazik and Saraxa are next to you. And you see now that I Iffy is likewise with you. It seems that she has recovered uh, from the treatment she was receiving from the uh, Terra Man like uh, shaman or seer, and joined you in the fight. Excellent. What do you guys say? So is the creature defeated, or is that just? Uh, the you hear the voice in your head. Uh, it has been purged from the traveler. Wonderful. Sorry, said that was a lot more fun than the first time. <laughs> uh, you hear in your uh, voice, you had allies this time. Yes. That's just what I was fixing to say. Thank you. you know, yeah. Had it not been for new Terramin allies. So is in the, that was in the real world, is that would that thing be weakened then? Uh, or is that just... No, it's tooth lodged in the traveler is now removed. That's good. Yes, it is. But it's about to be like a rare crocodile. Or something. It's perfidious presence remains. Mm -hmm. The spirit of hunger will spread from the Temple of the Toad. So we still have to go back and stop it. Yes. Would you do such things? Oh, you can restore your health to full too, Amar. Yeah. Okay, I was wondering. Yeah. Um, 
Well, yeah, of course we would. I assume any charges or anything you used uh, was not real, so... Correct, yep. Yeah. Anything you use from your magic items or things like that, or your weapons, uh, that it is not actually expended. Okay. okay. Is that what you desire? Well, that was yeah, our intent originally. Be, yes. We, we had tried to do that originally, but we, were, we failed, but it was only the three of us that we had allies. And you hear Yazik <laughs> and uh, Saraxa both kind of Aah! cry out. We would stand with these ones. That could help. Yes. Definitely. Oh yeah, they're they are true friends. Yes. So Carl, where then, are the, you guys are as well in terms of um uh like resituating or situating yourself on the map. Let me take a look here. The eased map. Where is the map? There's the monkey meister. That's what you guys wanted, right? What's you guys show up for? Let me see a cyborg yeah, monkey guy. Grab him too. If he, yeah, if he, if he helped us, at least he would annoy the crap out of C-Tech. <laughs> okay, so you guys are right here. Right in the middle of that lake. Uh, the airy appears to be right at the top. You know that uh, tower you guys were looking for? That spire mm -hmm. that was coming out of the lake? This, uh, the airy is a disc with a hole in it that floats about 150 feet above the top of that t spire. So we're at the, where are we at the dot? No. You guys, no, no, you're at, at the airy. So you're atop this. The, the tower here, itself yeah, is about, uh, I don't know, 200 feet tall, 300 feet tall. And okay. then you guys are, the airy is another 150 feet above that. Hmm. Actually, I, the first time I thought to ask this is, is this the tower we were originally trying to get to for the Monkey Meister? Seems to be. Huh, okay. <clears throat> So then, uh, the dot on the um, uh, thing there, that is the Toad Skipper Village over here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, oh, do I have the me measurement set up? Look at that. Holy smokes. <laughs> wow. Some days, you know, Kev from uh, the prepping that Kev from several months ago did really impresses Kev today. <laughs> uh, largely because I forgot I did it. Um, the Temple of the Toad is located right in the middle of this uh, island here. So from where you are, thanks to my newfound uh, nautical knowledge, you actually can't see land, I guess. Although you are higher up, but I don't, yeah. think, it's, I don't think it extends all the way to five miles, so does it? It was six miles? Or well, it depends on how high up we are, but... Yeah. 300 feet up, I guess. 300 feet... Curvature. I actually knew this. I actually looked this equation up a while back. <laughs> you gonna fight with some flat earthers or what? <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, that, random that's never stuff a good comes thing. into my head, man, and, and I'm like, okay, I gotta find the answer to this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I mentioned it was it was for the. Um, um, uh, you can what do you see call pretty it? far, actually, 300 feet up. Yeah, it's, it was three miles is how far you can see uh, out, but that's the limit of it. I was looking it up for um, uh, our Rollmaster game. Actually, I wasn't sure how far off the coast you could that's see. That's if you're like, that's if you're standing. That's flat. if you're ground. Yeah, that's if you're sea level. Yeah, that's you can, It says you can see 36 kilometers to 300 feet up. Oh, wow. So, you yeah, do you guys have an amazing view of basically, so it's, uh, uh, the I mean, conversion is six no, to ten. No intervention, right? Barring yeah. no like intervention by something. So that's about. If it's thirty-six, that's about fifty. No, no, it's, I'm going the other way. Uh, I think it's about twenty miles, twenty-five miles. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Sounds about right. Yeah. So you can actually can see all. Oh man, you know what, guys? I can actually reveal more map here. Ooh. Hot diggity damn. All right, so reveal some areas here. Let's do this. But what did the monkey meister want here? Yeah. Do you remember, Robert? He wanted some device or some 
It was, um... God, so long ago. It was something that would rework flesh. Yeah, okay. I was thinking it was medical in some nature, but I couldn't remember. Yeah. Go. Oh, man, you can still see further, too. <laughs> Let's see here. Oops, wrong thing. There we go. Okay, it's quite a bit you're going to be able to see. Oh, you can see the walls now, too. The walls oh, of the... Oh, oh. Well, we can't see beyond them, I'm sure. No, you can't see beyond them, unfortunately, but... Uh, that's cool. You can probably see right here as well. It's a lot of the map you guys have fleshed out uh, here. Okay. We should come here first. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember how far away we were when we started? Yeah, yeah we're like... We were down here somewhere? Yeah, we were right here. Yeah. Okay, so I think, I think, I think that should be... See, is that right? Yep, there we go. Yeah. More or less. Uh, and these walls here, I mean, they got to be 500 feet tall. Because there, you can see the walls of the whatever crater or whatever you're in uh, mm -hmm. here. Uh, they seem to extend as far as you can see. So, what do you guys wish to do next? Now, you uh, you wake up here and you were... Uh, I'm trying to remember, did a day pass? Or did you guys get here and were immediately thrown into this? I think we were immediately thrown into this. Yeah, so you're going to need a day's rest then. Yeah. Okay. But what are you guys thinking? They, you're not going to be in the full, like the, the audience before, unless there's any questions you have for the priestess, she will let you go. Uh, and then you guys will have a chance to talk amongst yourselves. Is there anything you, further you have for the priestess or for the uh, gathered um, members of this, uh, of this tribe or clan? No. I, I mean, I assume at some point you guys have told Sarg about what the overall mission of this group is and where you're trying to get back to. So he would be curious about the tower. Say, is, is this ta was this tower always yours? The, the that you put the eerie eerie upon. As f uh, you're asking the. The... Yeah, he, um, he would he would probably try to ask uh, not the priestess, but he would ask um, Yask. Uh, they what their answer is? They've uh, lived here as long as uh, as memory stretches. And do they know what's inside of the tower? Uh, uh, they know it is not safe to enter the tower. Okay. It is forbidden. That's all they... Forbidden. So then, what about the rest of you guys? What do you wish to do next? You have a chance to retire. You can get a, uh, a night's rest after this and get yourself, you're healed up, but you haven't restored your abilities after the last fight with the uh, crocodile god. Do we, are we wanting to go back there like right away then? Or ask more questions, well, since questions to these people? Yeah. We have options. George will be back next week. <laughs> <laughs> so unless we can kill this thing in an hour before Carl leaves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can, we can uh, ask about, I mean, should we ask? Why not? I mean, I would say by happenstance, you've been brought here. Um, we were tasked, and I'll just say, we we're tasked by this per this person called the Monkey Meister to find some sort of device here in this tower. It is supposed to warp flesh. Um, they any discussion of entering the tower? Because remember, the tower is 150 feet below where the area is. The area is just this disc that floats above, oh, okay. and oh, that's where okay. they live. Like they've built up, and all of their like the way I was describing it last time was you know mm -hmm. like the sort of like Adobe style homes that you saw in the original Planet of the Apes. 
Yeah. Imagine that, but built with built by you know with kind of scrap and such. That's what the area is like. So it floats up here. These guys fly you know out and and uh, serve you know fly around the area. Um, they fish in the lake down there, but they don't disturb the thing. What they can tell you is there's no uh, there is no main entrance on the surface. Okay. Uh, so you, you think that maybe we'd have to go like underwater. Find the entrance. Yeah, they n none of the the um, uh, Terra men go in uh, to the the tower. It, it is nothing but death. If uh, someone sent you here to recover, they know nothing of the Monkey Meister. Yeah. Um, but they, if they're not uh, like they're not, you know, they don't see it as like the Forbidden Zone. Uh, they're not going to try and you know kill you if you try and get in there. They just yeah. okay, know cool. for themselves that they won't go. <laughs> if you and if particularly if you rid the uh, uh, temple, the Toad, they don't really care about the uh, Toad Skippers or the terrible Toad Men. Yeah. It's yeah. really only the um, the the spread of, of the Crocodile God as well. The crocodile God, no. Yeah, 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 that's a threat to them for sure. Particularly, I mean, like if uh, they prob arguably are closer to sort of a crocodilian thing than what uh, the toad skippers or the terrible toad men are so mm -hmm. if that infected the their tribe that would be kind of yeah. the end of them so if you're able to do that they'll provide what help and what support they can they just won't go into the tower themselves right okay um, hmm. well i guess we're going back to the uh lair of the of sebek Um, right. Well, <laughs> like Avar said, from the metagaming perspective, it'd be great if we could do this next time. <laughs> well, I would definitely we have say two, well, we'll have two allies too, right? So. Yes, that's true. We're yeah, we've allies. got, I mean, while we've got the two allies, and we did, you know, mm -hmm. the, the main thing is controlling the space. Yes. Right. You know, uh, forcing him into. Yeah situations where he can't fully move around recall as well that that the last time you faced c-tech was after you guys had had your asses handed to you by his avatar yes you guys that's barely right. survived yeah. if he's uh quick like late appearance that's what took out the avatar of c-tech oh we're that in the uh egg room yeah, yeah right yeah yeah so like when we were you guys... all pretty beat up yeah. yeah, and there were certainly lots of corridors that, I mean, you know, um, Zarg was able to run from and keep ahead of him, and that was unhasted. Um, so if we can draw him into that area, uh, we should be able to mm -hmm. stay ahead of him. We probably won't be able to flank him very well, but... Well, even if we get him in, in that lair and we use missile fire and surround him, he'll have to choose which direction to go. Yeah. And those creatures fly, so. If it does start getting, yeah. of course, we also will have to fight his minions uh, from yeah, the we'll, hole. Yeah, we'll see how, what, what's still there. Yeah. I don't feel like we can make more. So you guys now know as well, Amar was in a bit of a daze when he came out of it, but uh, there are two different ways to access that chamber. Remember, there's a way through the temple itself, uh, yes. right? That Amar oh, yeah. came yeah, down, came and in. there's the underground way that you uh, you all came in the first time, that wound through the entire temple. Hmm. All right, there's like a back door, right, Amar? Yeah, that's that's how I came out. It um, let's see if I remember properly, we would go back in, and it would take us up to like the top of the temple. Yes. And then from the top, you could work your way back inside to the um, to the uh, cistern. That's not the right word, but yeah, no, that's, that's probably uh, the right word. Is that the right word? Yeah, okay. yeah. Big base yeah, in the water so to, yeah. to that cistern area mm -hmm. where we uh, originally encountered him. So, so what you may remember as well is when you left the temple. Remember, there was a bunch of the toad men who were like worshiping you. Yes. And so now we will have to kill them all. 
Because <laughs> <laughs> they're not going to worship me anymore because I, I don't have the, the, the thorn in my side. Mm -hmm. Or the tooth. Um, yes, what so the, sure. uh, the Terramen will offer you is, 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 um, oh, let's take a look. One second here, I got that. Where is it? Where is it? Doing exactly what you love, Will. <laughs> oh, everybody the drink. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, where is it? Here? This is not vodka, but, you know. Here we go. <laughs> There we go. Let's see, let's see. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Hmm. Not in there, so let's see. Uh. Go to this. There we go. Uh, what I'm looking for is because these things are, um, their powers are powers of the mind. I'm looking at, uh, other than having potions, I wonder if there's some cool psychic objects that you guys might be able, uh, they might uh, give you to try and aid in your fight. But I don't know offhand what those would be. Hmm. So it's not like, unfortunately, the uh, what do you call it? Uh, third edition, uh, where they like the psychic artifacts or, or psychic uh, magic weapons oh. are really distinct. They don't yeah. seem to have them listed separately. Yeah, I think that was the Expanded Sonics Handbook or whatever. I enjoyed the heck out of that. Oh, man. One of my favorite books for 3.5. I love that book. Yeah, I I love anything with Sonics. I'm, I'm a... I don't know. It's probably... Mm. I'm the guy who liked the Sonics rules. 100%. <laughs> it's funny. Did you ever play Rollmaster back in the day? No, no. I, this was my first real experience with it. Is the oh, okay. Play. Yeah, cause, like, because mentalism was always part of Rollmaster, I always like, I hey, know. I mean, Psionics fits in, in fantasy. Never, And I love Dark Sun. Uh, so. Yeah. All right, so let's do this. What, um, um, there is a, a little, um, vial, almost like a, uh, a squat, the kind of thing you'd put like uh, maybe spices or something in. So it's, it's, it's a shorter okay. little glass thing, but it's got some, what looks to be oil in it. And within there are these um, like dark, um, almost like greenish purple, uh, like, a, like a reflection of oil. There are some leeches in there. And what they will allow you to do <sighs> Oof, um, so I said there were three, right? Yeah. So what they can do is when you apply them, uh, you have to kind of put them in the base of your, your neck. Uh, it will grant you, uh, there are two effects. It will last for uh, three plus one d three rounds. Basically, you take so it gives you uh, you take two fewer damage from every attack that causes physical injury. So that will give you basically dr two, and hmm. it lowers your armor class by one. Oh wow! So <clears throat> there are three of those biofeedback <laughs> leeches. Cool. Let's get one or yeah. 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 I'm just gonna write this down here in chat. Minus what? Minus one AC and DR2 basically. That's nice. There you go. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think I had given my other potion of flying to another player character, so it's 
Oh yeah, cause, and you. Uh, I well, use, you my use last one. one. Yeah. I think, does Dave's character have it? I think. I think it's Dave's character, but he's yeah. not here. But I mean, I still have one potion of gaseous form in a pinch. Do you have one? Maybe I should give it to Amar because it seems like the creature is dead set on him. So mm. well, we fall. If we fall, then he can escape. Yeah. Okay. You want it, Amar? Yeah. Well, so what potion is it? Potion of gaseous form. It'd be like a last ditch. Like you turn into gas yeah. and GTFO, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you also have. Uh, what do we call this thing? Uh, call them berserker beetles. Ooh. Oh. <clears throat> uh, you take them. You roll one d twenty. If you roll a one, uh, you overtax your system. Uh, but you so you get a bonus for this, but you will lose uh, twice your hit points. Uh, this one has a duration of four uh, plus one d four. Twice your hit points, or you die instead. No, no. What what you do oh. is you roll. Okay. One d six. And then you oh. divide that amount between uh, bonuses to your strength, dex, and con. Wow. You roll 1d6, you said? Or yeah. One... Divide by... Divide them on. You said if you roll the 1, what happens? Uh, you take damage. Okay, but, but Kev, you said you take twice your... Uh, twice points. what you rolled. Oh, twice what you rolled, okay. I was like, well, that's instant death. <laughs> There you go, there's the Berserker Beetles. And... Aha, got it. <laughs> That's your pull. Uh, we'll give you one more uh, thing. Let's call this... I don't know what we're going to call this. Call it a um, Ooh, vampiric sponge. So, so you may sacrifice when you touch this thing, you can sacrifice any amount of uh, hit points. And then the next target that takes it, they regain three times that amount hmm. in healing. Uh, so the Berserker Beetles, uh, what did I say? Three uh, biofeedback leashes. There will be three uh, Berserker Beetles and let's say three Vampiric Sponges as well. So cool. So with the sponge, can you apply it to yourself, or does it have to be somebody else? It has to be somebody else. Okay. Yeah. As I say, that's a weight. If you that. apply it to yourself, it'll just take more damage. Okay. You'll take uh, more. You just more. pass it around. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. It they and die as soon as they do that, though. And does it hold? Does it hold it? Like, is there a duration, the amount of time, or would it hold it? So, like, could. For instance, before we go it, into the battle. Uh, yeah, it say, needs to be within the next minute. Otherwise, it'll just. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I metabolize the blood. 
Yeah, yeah, okay. Or the life force or whatever. Okay. One minute duration. Okay, got it. Got it. I was trying to figure out a way to break it. <laughs> okay. Uh, and Siraksha and Yazuka will, will be uh, fighting with you as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. And let's give you a 1d, give us a 1d4. Actually, give a 2d2 roll, let's say, because a minimum 2. Are the sponges? Uh, this, there's three sponges, three berserker beetles, three biofeedback leeches. Mm -hmm. Say 2d2. Uh, 2d2, please. Yeah. Nice. All right. So you also get uh, four, um, like uh, overripe kind of. Um, they're like uh, imagine like a combination of like a kiwi and a pineapple. These small, like hard, um, kind of hard, uh, hided or um, skinned uh, fruits. Uh, if you uh, tear them open, uh, they act as a healing potion. Okay. So you have four restorative fruits. And they heal, uh, what is it, 2D? I can't remember how much a healing potion does. I think it's 2D4 plus 2, isn't it? And, this, and you can sip it for 1D4? Or is it 2D8? Let's find out. I wonder, I haven't heard anything further from Hyperborea. I wonder when the third edition is actually shipping. Peace, when did he last send out um, an email update? Let me hmm. see. Oh, my um, Twilight 2000 will be shipping uh, shortly, Carl. I yeah, got, I already got, I got mine. Did you? Oh, awesome. Like, it's a Canadian yes, shipment, it's man. Cool. It's fucking yeah. brutal. I, I guess... Yeah, I got did, they, did they not? They decided not to do the tin thing. No, they did. Because oh. I know I've seen one tin in on uh, Twitter. Huh? I thought I did the tin. I, I don't know. We have to go back and look. I thought I did the tin, and I didn't get the tin. Mm. <laughs> I have to look. Yeah, no, I got mine. Oh, you got it. You got the tin. Oh no, I didn't get the tin. No. Two uh, D four uh, plus two is how much mm -hmm. each of the fruits. Can. You can't uh, sip these. Um, yeah, I got. No, I got. Um, I guess like it, it's weird because like there's some things that um, sometimes you we get, get stuff. Faster, yeah. yeah, like my my. Co it's weird. My copy of uh, uh, Guns and Gears uh, arrived like two weeks before the for uh, Paizo, two weeks before the the general release for it. Uh, and then there's other things that I get a little bit late, you know, because it's held up at customs. I got my mm -hmm. second to last shipment from Six More Vodka uh, arriving, and I don't know what they done, but uh, um, U.S. Customs seems to tear those fucking boxes open every time they come in. Because the right. last time it was like crudely taped together. Because uh, uh, the with the, uh, the Genesis ending, I wanted to make sure I got uh, copies of everything before the prices them goes fucking bonkers. Oh right, yeah, the last. Gone. Mm -hmm. The last update Jeff gave was um, October 16th, and he was thinking shipping now because of global supply chain insanity. Yeah. Um, April, May. Wow. Oh, my gosh. That late? Yeah. Yeah. It's, well, it's, it's, it's state of the times, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, okay. So, then... Uh, anything else you guys wish to do? Uh, if you, if anyone wants to lay claim to those magic items too, just uh, add them to your character sheets. Yeah, I would say, here's what I think. <laughs> you guys tell me what you think. I think we take one each of those three things. Yeah. And then split the fruit between um, Yazik and um, the other guy. Sir I control and I can't remember his name. <laughs> yes, sir. <Raxa. laughs> yeah. I'm like, I suck. That was my thinking on it, but you guys tell me what you think. That's, yeah, that's what I was thinking. I mean, I put it on my character sheet, you know, the, the a sponge, a leech, and a beetle. And then you, you have these uh, pomegranates, you said? 
Uh, so they're kind of a cross. Actually, yeah, it's probably not a, a bad descriptor because outside of a pomegranate, it's quite tough, right? So probably close like that. Yeah, I figured they could make use of that. Of course, they also <laughs> pomegranate have poultice. All <laughs> <laughs> that. Okay, so what? Um, what is the I mean, one thing that that uh, Sorax and Yosik want to uh, inquire of is, what do you do um, if it does not come out and fight again? If it knows that you're a threat, and it knows that you've thrown it out of its mind, what happens if we have to go in after it? You mean like go into the water? That is where the crocodile finds its home. They drag um, their prey deep down. Well, I, I I do have this spell. Maybe it would work if I, you know, I, I explain the lightning bolt spell, and if I shot it into the water, mm -hmm. I mean, that would hurt it at least. But uh, I don't know. Can you, uh, can, how often can you do that? Oh, I, I'm not as powerful as, I guess I'm talking to the, the matriarch, I probably am not as powerful as you, but uh, I can do it at least once. Uh, well, just as uh, Yazik and uh, Saraksha you're talking to, they're the ones who are going with oh. you, so you're sort of planning the hunt, as it were. Yeah, um, yeah, I can only do that once, so I probably would want to save it and use this, use my rifle until it were to flee, and then, you know, go from there. Mm -hmm. does, does the rifle, sorry, what is the, what is energy does the PDW use? What was that, Robert? Sorry. Sorry, I was asking what the PDW, what the energy that comes from that is. Would that also shock the water? Like, no, it's probably no. like laser. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sci-fi yeah. energy. Yeah, okay. I, I mean, I also have shock and grass. <laughs> it's really, <laughs> technically, yeah. it, it's uh, fucking uh, scratches on the negative. But, mm -hmm. you know. That's what I was going to say. It's like those G.I. Joe guns from back in the day. <laughs> totally. Plasma guns. Yeah. Little, little blue. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So what would we do? Um, the water source. I'm trying to think where the water would come. We drain from. the water. I mean, I have shocking graphs too. Well, and I, I was wondering. I mean, Sard, can you freeze water? Um, at this point, no. I don't have any spells that can do that. Um, well, what good are you? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking of. Yeah. Just thinking of things environmentally that we could do. Of course, yeah. it's a big. I mean, it is a big space. Yep. So um, the Terrans can definitely get up high. Yep. Um, That's one advantage of the entire thing do... too. Like that 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 um, open kind of wide open ceiling that is all through the temple that you guys have seen. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so. Um... I think the other thing is, well, is you mentioned that you're going that the way in the front and they had all those things there. Do we wish to f go in and fight our way through to them, or no? I think we do. We sneak. Sneak. Yeah, sneak, sneak is better. I think. And um, with the staff, I can make everybody invisible, and I also have invisibility that I can cast on. Mm. That's interesting. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, as long as we don't get too oh, close, uh, I think. Um, because I think I think something his size might be able to detect us if we get too close. Um, just just from a perspective, Kev, the invisibility spells. If you're within thirty feet of C Tech, well, sorry, thirty feet of a ten hit dice or higher creature, they get to make a sorcery yeah. saving throw. So, uh, I'll tell you too. Most of my big scary monsters like that too, they have scent. So. Yeah. Yeah, curb. Yeah, we'll probably stop. Well, but it'll get, get past the minions. That's Most definitely. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and that's all the frogmen in the cave that you're referring to? Yeah. Or on the temple level, I yeah. suppose. Yeah. Yeah, see, I think, honestly, I think if we're going to approach stealthily, probably going in through the caves is probably better. Um, Because it's, I mean, if nothing else, you know, you've got, unless we want to try and go through the way I came at night. The other so thing those is, would be the two options. But I think the, the caves are probably better. 
the other thing is is if um if for some reason he will not show himself um he did not seem to like it when we threatened to destroy the eggs that was his avatar but one assumes that he would respond if he helped his children yeah i'm destroyed and he can't hide forever forgive me Good. but didn't you kill a bunch of those eggs we did. I thought we destroyed them. Yeah, I think they were destroyed after afterwards. Okay. Yeah, true. Right. <laughs> I'll kill your next generation. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think going in through the caves is best, and then yeah. Get him. I mean, he warning. he wants me. You know, even if he's in the water, I think I can entice him to come out. on you chicken <laughs> I'll just show him some leg <laughs> <laughs> all right so what is the plan here then guys going through the caves that was your yep. suggestion tomorrow yeah. okay yeah, and you back to the cage to the elevator and then through the ruined temple all and right make sure on invisibility but, uh, the duration is I think it's 24 hours, isn't it? Um, I think in like most of these old school games. Well, the of radius is just best, I think he can only cast invisibility, not invisibility 10 foot radius. Yes, no, it's not 10 foot radius. Uh, can't, yeah, until canceled or dispelled. So, or until you attack. So, we have one, two, three. We have six going in. Um, I can do one. Actually, well, hold on. If we're talking about this the night before, I can just make a couple of these, but uh, I can also do them off of the staff. So, so yeah, we, we don't need to hold up for this. Uh, I'll, I'll figure it out myself. What spells he does. Okay. Uh, do you have your spells uh, selected as well, uh, Ify, for going in? Yeah, I do. Okay. Uh, no, I think you're still sitting on... Uh, did Ify learn any new spells? This is, I think, the first opportunity you have to catch your breath. I mean, I did all that, I think. You know, I learned a bunch of spells. So. Oh, did you? Okay, great, great. I mean, I, that was a, yeah, I did learn a bunch of spells. I okay, so, yeah, as long as you had access to... Yeah, I used Vampiric Touch. I had that before. I'll just switch out to Lightning Bolt. Okay. <clears throat> all right. So then... Uh, it will require you'll be transported down by uh the uh now i guess with the other uh taraxans or terramen uh do you wish to have them drop you off like on one end of the island and then go in or let's go over here here mm -hmm. there we go now are you going to be dropped off kind of Bring you over here. Oh, wrong. There you go. Um, end of the island and make your way in, or like closer to the temple. What are you guys thinking? I think closer to the temple. Closer to the temple, yeah. Okay. So you drop close to the temple, and then um, let's see here. Uh, Sardi, you're going to need five charges of the. Uh, uh, or five, yeah, five castings of invisibility. So it'll be five charges from your staff. Yep. Uh, except I'm gonna. He's gonna use one invisibility. Uh, he knows invisibility, so he's going to uh, do one invisibility for himself, and then four charges for everybody else. Okay. So that's a total of eight, I believe. Invisibility is no, no just one charge. Okay. So I'll be four chargers going from the staff. All right, so you guys find yeah, yourself back there. And making your way through. Now, what you find is uh, as you make your way through the the catacombs underneath, uh, there is no difference. Uh, or, or rather, the, uh, the underground, uh, there is a difference. You don't see, you can still hear the toads croaking in that first kind of level past where the waterfall is uh, there's tons of toads still down here and then as you take the 
elevator up into the toad home. Let me see here. Where are you? Temple, temple. Every time I'm wandering around trying to figure out my uh, uh, where I've left you guys, uh, I can feel Arlen's uh, voice in my head. Oh, Arlen will be here next time as well, too, actually. Because oh, Arlen, how sweet. Yeah, he wasn't <clears throat> able to be here this time because of uh, yeah, he's got building uh, uh, shelves with his uh, grandfather. If you saw, I'm not sure if you saw on Discord, he's got those awesome new uh, shelves for his game. Yeah, books. the nice uh, yeah. IKEA shelves. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta get shelves. I got too many books. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I need more. I need more shelves because I'm running out of space. I need well, less I run out books. Space. I think I, I can officially. Yeah. There was a time where I was like, I need to get some more shelves and whatnot too. I genuinely need to get less books now. Yes. It's just it is yeah. too out of control. Yeah. There is some stuff I need to purge. Yes. Mm. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, where on earth? Is Carmen San Diego? Yeah, ah, here it is. Here it is. Found it. <laughs> All right, not Carmen San Diego. She's still lost. But uh, mm. here is our map. All right, great. Let me bring you guys over here. And let me, uh, before I forget, I'll rename this. Give it a toad. We go. Won't. Bring you guys over here. And you also, uh, as Art says, when we get close, if we see it, I'm going to uh, everybody stay close so I can cast haste on you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now it's still it's not a Colin, uh, but we actually have uh, Colin's brothers joining us in our Legacy of the Crystal Shard game too. Uh, so yep. alternate uh, Saturdays, uh, he'll be in. Uh, all right, I think he's playing in jackals with you too, right, Carl? Yeah, we've been we've been hit or miss on this um, on our Sunday game, so he wants like a consistent game. So uh, you know we're gonna, and it looks like jackals. You can, I mean, you could because of the, the hirelings you can have, you could do it solo if that comes to. That. They're pretty but, tough too. Like the the characters <laughs> are way more competent because of the clash point system. Yeah. Um, you yeah. know the uh, you definitely can can. Uh, run that uh, game with a smaller group. We, we've had really good games with two players. Yeah, uh, so I that. think, so J Ahab seems interested and nice. Necrom Warrior, I don't, I think, I don't remember who that is, but I think we played with them. Yep, yep, in uh, some of Arlen's games. Okay. That's cool. Uh, well, depending too, I mean, uh, I know um, JM has, I think half joking, but uh, depending on his availability too, he might jump in on the game uh, if, uh, oh, yeah. if just... yeah, he's working on, he, PM me about other projects. Mm, cool. So we'll see. Maybe I can. I mean, I can always. I think Hobbs had mentioned that I did Invictus, or he mentioned yeah. not by name, but yeah. <clears throat> no, you you got name checked in his uh, podcast, and then I mentioned it. That's why I mentioned it on Discord. Oh, yeah, because yeah, so you're, he, you're he big guy. To me, uh, he reached out to me, and uh, we'll see. Cool. So guess, uh, cool, cool, cool. Well, he's in Texas so. as well, too, right? Is he? Is yeah, he? yeah, he moved to Texas. He's not from Texas originally, but he's in Texas now. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, so here's where you guys are: is uh, entering in where you came in before. This is leading your way out. Oh, let me get your uh, allies as well. I've got the tokens I had from before. Go. And they are right, boom, there. Oh, and they are restored to full hit points too. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So, where do, uh, do you guys wish to go? Okay. And you can freely move like you you know that it's up and around and then it's up the stairs and then along the way yeah. um, You can see the toad men working again. They're back to work, you know croaking uh, and whatnot So even any incidental noise that you guys have from your footfalls and whatnot is likely to be um, obscured just by the general uh, din of these uh, toad men working mm -hmm. Why don't yeah, uh, let's see here 
Uh, Will, give us a 1d20 roll, please. 1d20. Nice. Yep. Okay. So it'll be completely... You make your way all the way through here without disturbing them whatsoever. You can move your tokens through if you like, uh, but because we're not... Um, nothing is actually happening in here, we could just skip yeah, we just, in. Yeah. Since we only have Carl for a little bit longer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me bring you in two. Go. Boom. There we are. The cistern. There we go. And here we are. All right, guys. So <coughs> you reached here. Let's switch out our music. This is far too soothing. There's something unnerving here. We're still invisible, right? You yes. are. Okay. And I would suggest that we decide if we want to prep the beetles and the sponges. Oh, well, the sponges are a minute. Uh, I would think... The, the duration is question. in rounds, right? Yeah. Okay, so... Yeah. I would think we the best thing we would do is to... Get him, get him aware of us, and then withdraw. Yeah. And you know, after that move action, backing up, then we can take. So backing the from guy. here would be into where all of those toad men are, and you would yeah. be facing uh, dozens of them again. Oh, you're talking about in the um, in the complex. Yeah, so like from here, it we're... backs up to that last map we we uh, went to. Where okay. it leads into where all the uh, toad men are working. Okay. I mean, you could definitely go through there. They didn't really okay. pose you much right. of a challenge last time. Yeah. But just means well, that you would be facing a lot of them. Yeah. Potentially. Well, if we're in the pillars, if we if once he sees us, if we scatter into the pillars, he'll have a harder time getting to us. I think. Pillars. What do you mean? Like these. Are these, yeah. these go up to the... Uh, yeah, these are pillars. Yeah. yeah. There's a little dais up here. Yeah. Well, how long does the haste last? The haste will last... Uh, this down. Um, 18 rounds. So, three minutes. Okay. Which, as soon as we see him, I can cast it. Um, well, I mean, it'd be better if we honestly spread out. Yeah. And then... So I should so I should cast it now. We spread it. Or, yeah. That's Let me go. What else we say? Do we want to just go ahead and cast it now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Because it takes me that long to get his attention. Yeah. So we cast. So I cast haste on everybody. So that's three more charges. Okay. Okay. And then, I guess we're still invisible, so you can move, right? Yep. Yeah. Position yourselves where you guys want. I feel like yeah. I, like this would be a good place up here. Well, uh, I, how far can we do? We do one move at a time, or how? No, you guys can move yourself. I'll tell you if if uh, something happens. I wanted to move up to here, right? So. Yeah, if you're invisible, no problem. Yeah. I think Zard is going to be just further back. Um, so I have a feeling he's going to go after a mortar, but there might be other things that come out. Um, so yeah, he's going to be as far back here as possible. Okay. Where's Sart going? I just lost him. Sorry, he's over here. Uh, let me oh. grab the... Yeah. There we go. You see that, Kev? Uh, right, let me zoom out. I don't see him. He's over in the corner of that dial. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I, I might reposition him just slightly because I want to get the uh, distance to pull. Oh yeah, he can easily hit with uh, ice start. Okay. 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 Oh wow. Ah, uh, your line of sight's gonna be pretty crap from there, Sarge. Just to FYI. Yeah. Yeah. yeah this is like the edge of that thing, right? Yeah, he's gonna move just a bit. Okay. Right here. And uh, go in position, uh, Yazik and Saraxa as well. 
where you want them. Let's see, they're going to be airborne. Maybe here, then we can see a little bit better through this way. And I don't think they have any ranged attacks. Uh, they have uh, Yavalines they could throw <clears throat> for 1d6 damage. They're not oh, oh, great. Maybe they, should, maybe they should come over here. That way maybe they can flank a little better. I'm just, I, he's not here. I'm just suggesting this. Uh, it's kind of to the bottom right of the pool. You think down there? Yeah. Is this yeah, raised like over here? Room. This platform? Where you are? Yes. No, uh, this right, like this right here. Is that also raised? Uh, that that, that is. stairs down. And yes, it is. Uh, that would be, let's see here, each of those staircases is 25, so it would be, uh, let's see here, this is 25 feet up, and then it's 50 feet up, so where you are is 50 foot down to the ground. Oh, okay. And then this would be 25 feet down to that platform, which would be 20, actually, let's say 10 feet. 25 is probably too much. It's probably better here, then. That'd be a 45 degree, no, like, I guess if, if these things are only 20 feet, it'll be 20 feet up. <laughs> That's probably a 45 degree angle, then. Uh, so 20 feet, 20 yeah, feet, so it'll be, uh, if you're over he there, Carl, you're 10 feet yeah. up. It's a 10 foot drop from there to there. That's probably, that's reasonable. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The only issue I'm going to point out, guys, is where we are, if it might be easy enough for him to cut us off from going back this way, especially if he. So if we, if our plan would be to kite him like we did the last time at any point, it'll probably be pretty hard to do. Yeah, but I think there's. I think with the pillars, and I think with um, with our air mobile. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. Our aerosol. What's your yeah. jumping distance, Amar? I don't think I have any kind of special jump. I don't okay. think. It's just the running. Okay. Um, but I think we figured out once upon a time. I think that might be based on it. I'll look in the book and see if I can find. Okay, because I think uh, the only reason I ask is, I mean, unless you're planning on, you know, making like a messiah here and walking across the water. Uh, oh, how deep is it? Uh, the water uh, here, you can't see the bottom. It's all grimy and uh, slick, and it gets deeper as it's okay. heading down in this direction. I'm on the wrong layer. Hold on. In here, I mean, I guess there we yeah. go. Uh, so it gets deeper in here. You can't really see the bottom from the point where these like, oh, okay. pillars are here. That was part of his plan, uh, I'll tell you, was just to kind of get in the water and stir it. Mm, okay. To try and get um, sure. him to come up. But like like I was thinking this was walkable, this area right here. Uh, I think so. Like, it wasn't like right, right beyond, let's say uh, beyond here where this uh, these poles are marked. That's sort of the last uh -huh. bit before it starts plunging down into the okay, cistern. Okay, then I will move myself to there for now. Okay. Okay. All right. So then, guys, you seem to have got yourself in a position. There was no disturbance on that that grimy, blackened water. Uh, the, the smell in here is, is just awful. It's that terrarium reptile smell. Mm. What do you do? <clears throat> well, I think you're up, Lamar. Right? All right. <laughs> <laughs> Lamar is going to move down to there. Okay. And of course, he stirs the water, and then this would be where I would. How? I mean, is the invisibility thing? What is that? Just. <clears throat> I, until is that you be attack. On no matter what. Or, until I attack. Yeah. Or. Like I think you'd probably be able to drop it at will if you're. Yes. See, that's kind of what I was thinking, but I didn't know for sure. Yeah. It says until canceled, so I don't know if I have to do it. Um, but we could have planned ahead of time. Like, if I see the water stirring, I'll, um, and that's when you want me to drop it, I can. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you appear, so, yeah, and then so you see there's, more... uh, there's a ripple that goes across the water surface. Mm -hmm. From right in the center of the cistern. What do you do? Right in the big area. Amar calls out, C-Tech, I have returned. It echoes throughout the thing. You think you can see there's a, a small wake kind of moving from one side to the other under the water. 
if you still want a taste, here I am. The weight goes to the side again, and then the weight goes back the other way. It disappears. And then you can see the wake coming directly towards you. Uh huh. Did you have a ready to action prepared? Yes, his ready to action is to move. <laughs> okay. So you'll probably want to do that because the wake gets in right. to right around there. Yeah. That's just beginning to go up. Let's roll some initiative. Okay. All right. So everyone decide what you're doing with your round. You've all been readied, so I'm fine with everyone declaring oh, actions this round. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why I'm rolling a d20. <laughs> you said roll initiative. I was like, well, first of all, it's not a 20. Uh, it's one of my actions. Um, okay. All right. Let's see here. So I think that's what <laughs> I Do you doing. like the idea of throwing a roll 20 at them? <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. All right, so what I get for uh, initiative here? Uh, let's do this here. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> nice. Thanks for just said. Will's voice is awesome. Just fun and pleasant. 100% agree. Yes. 100% yes. <laughs> awesome. agree. Great. I swear, I was watching a little bit of Critical Role again recently, and I'm like, you know, they're damn good, but I uh, can't. I, I don't know why it's like these maybe it's because I know all of you guys now but I can watch these uh, better than almost anything else <laughs> on there right I started watching yeah. the new uh, season of because uh, yeah. I, I hadn't I've never watched uh, Critical Role at uh, length I'm enjoying yeah. the new season it's pretty cool yeah, yeah it's, fun. it's neat they still, they still strike me like the thing that I find with uh, them, um, I talked about in the podcast before too, but they still seem like friends who are playing D&D &D together. Like they seem yes. like what you're seeing is what you'd see if they were playing on their own. Yeah. I think that they are natural performers, so they, they do voices and shit yes. like that to try and entertain yeah. each other. But yeah. I think the, the audience is secondary. Uh, yeah, well, to the... I, yeah, I don't know how much you know about the original story behind that. I don't want to go into that while we're doing this, but you know, it was basically Liam's birthday party and... He said it was a one-off. Him and Sam were going to do a one-off with Matthew Mercer and a couple other. That's friends. amazing. I yeah. love it. Yeah, and, it's, it's great. It just it. I, and I find that like so many of the uh, the the other ones that are that come from that, it just it feels so much more like just performance, and it it doesn't have that feel of friends playing games. So yeah, I, but I really do enjoy. Uh, I, I've enjoyed watching them. And there's this past episode was actually it was. Very, very cool. Uh, I think it, as a long time DME, we all sort of saw where things were gonna go with this one without yep. spoiling anything, but it was it was yes. pretty great. Yep. All right, so everyone's declared? No, what were we, oh, we don't have our, um, oh, our yes. lizard folk, or our uh, <laughs> Terra men, the Taraxans, what are they doing? Mm -hmm. uh, so he's not close enough to get there, unfortunately. Yeah, I didn't think about that too much. This guy here can... Yeah, he's gonna move. Sorry, melee. So? Yeah. Okay. Oh, <laughs> All right then. We can. He can probably fly in melee. But... So I think. Uh, Robert, did you lose to, uh, initiative to me? Oh, you did. Cause I rolled a six. So I think. Well, yes, you're I'm up. Tomorrow. Well. What's the move range on the um, on the move rate for the? Um, uh, same the same as a human. So thirty. Okay. Yeah. For. So. Will, we're all hasted. Would yeah, you kindly so beat? Six. Oh, look at that six. Alrighty. So we have melee. Now, um, if you're withdrawing from uh, combat, that's we, what we've said is you can go during uh, the melee phase, but remember you're restricted to a third of your movement if you're withdrawing. Amar, were you intending on withdrawing or you just, were you, did you have a move on deck? Um, You've got missile. Well, no, so wait, am I threatening in at that range? Well, it's gonna be melee, which means that this thing's gonna move in on you. Okay, so yeah, so Amar's move, one, so Remember, two. if you are going to withdraw, it means you cannot make a uh, missile attack then. That's that's okay. That's why I was shit. That. Go racing back. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, 20. God, trying to figure out the math on that's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is nothing. After funny. a month of Rollmaster, <laughs> that's a fucking piece yeah. of cake. 35. 
I think he can move to right there. Okay. So you poof, spring up. All right. And this, oh shit, Soraxo is going to get the, oh, you can't see him, can he? No. Shit. No. So I need Soraxo to give us a save versus, just give us a d20 roll. Just a d20 roll. Yeah, because like this thing's that. so big. I'm just going to see if he can avoid, uh, it's an avoidance save I'm getting here. 11. Um, bell curve. <laughs> Yeah, like I'm looking over at my uh, DM screen, which I should have grabbed before the session. Let's see here. Where's the save? Here we go, here we go, here we go. Turn on dead. Nope. These are right at the back, I think. Nope, where the F sharp? Now it's only one, here it is, here it is. Okay, so he has five hit dice. Shit, that's a fail. Mm. So I'm gonna make an attack roll at uh, minus four on Saraxa. Saraxa may unfortunately be invisible, but like, shit, trying to like flap his wings to get out of the way, yep. but maybe caught in uh, this thing's maw. Nat 20. Oh God. Oh yeah. shit. Damn. All right, and then we'll roll a d6. Can we um, Fucking do Fucking six. Can we do an astonishing point for this? Nope, they're NPCs. Okay, okay. Yeah, they're NPCs. Yeah, all right. So this will be multiplied by sheepers. By three, because I rolled a six. Oh, geez. I yeah, he's dead now. So that's Crunch. 78. He was my favorite. I liked him best. So Sirax is flapping his wings, and this thing is suddenly like... Yeah, arcs his hand to the side, and we. What's uh, the last thought in Sarax's head bah, before those m jaws snap down on him? Sarax is like, I thought he couldn't see me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that's really. Yep. What's going on we about? should have had Sarax attack. Okay, <clears throat> so we'll put uh, there, and he's not quite able to reach you. Uh, but he does, unfortunately, eat Saraxa. All right, uh, so that was, uh, and no one else is on melee. Uh, looks like everyone else is moving, so you guys can go ahead and move yourselves. On your, Amar, you've already done your move, obviously, for the first phase. Yeah. yeah. So let's see here. So I'm moving him to halfway. And remember, if you want to move, uh, run, you can actually move an accelerated rate, so you can, like, double your, your movement rate. Can you run and then melee? No. Okay. Yeah, you can charge. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. He, like, can, he can't. He can't do that. He yet, can double. So. We're double move though, right? Because we're hasty. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yes. So half move is like our normal move. Yeah. So a charge um, would be. Well, if, if you didn't declare a charge, you yeah, can't do okay. it. Okay. So. Okay. I'm trying to think. Next round. All right. That's right. Okay. Yep. But then he's going to move back here. Just he's going to charge this guy. Okay. Angle. Once everyone's okay. finished with their actions uh, for the first phase, let me know. Um, yeah. Amar, you're up first, actually, on or next on... Oh, I think that was Saraxa for move in melee. Yeah. So we'll just change that. Take a minus two on that, but it'll be uh, digest. <laughs> so... <laughs> All right. Uh, then we have uh, second phase. We have uh, Iffy and Amar who are uh, on. Oh, yeah, missile. Missile's at first. Go ahead, yeah. guys. Go ahead, Amar. Yeah, I'm working on it. Let's see here. I made my save, so that is eight points of damage. Let's see here. All right. Hits it. Uh, then uh, Iffy. You unload yeah, Sorry with about your... the printing in the background. Um, right, I'm going to fire. Oh, we got to go. No, we don't. Yeah, we're time. Okay. Is that 10 minutes? Right. I don't know why my thing isn't. Oh, there it is. Okay. I'm going to fire three times with the. No, I fired twice. Yep. My thing is not opening. I don't know why. Uh, um, well, you can fire. Um... Uh, whatever ammo you spent uh, in the in the dreamscape is not spent. You still have that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so go ahead and make your attack rolls. Yeah, I'm getting there. Oh, okay, it's just. I don't think this sheet app prompts for modifiers, right? No, it does not prompt for modifiers. Okay, yeah, so it rolls no. automatically. Okay. There we go. That's a solid hit. Critical oh. hit. 
Oh, awesome. Nice. And the second one. Okay. Uh, that one's a miss, so it hits its side. But uh, go ahead and roll 1d6. You got minus two. Mm -hmm. I think it's only plus two. Only plus two, okay. Plus two, alrighty. So again, if he's firing away, these uh, red like blaster bolts are slamming into the side of this thing. Mm -hmm. uh, then it is, uh, is this magic? Oh, magic was uh, Sard? Yeah, from Sard. Uh, I have an issue with my, I don't know why, whenever we get into combat, I can't try to pull up the character sheet here. All right, I'm gonna just make the roll because I can't get the character sheet to open. So it's a uh, 1d20 plus, um, that's one of the reasons I wrote all this down. Uh, well, is... hold on, I'll roll for you. If you can't get your, I can get your character sheet to work. Okay. I'm not interested in, in having all the math done on the fly okay. here. Okay. Uh, yep. Or are we here, Reavers of Too Late? I start. I care. Here you go. Does that help? Yeah, maybe. Uh, nope, still not opening. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to have to log out and come back in. Okay. Uh, Is that the one you were trying? Yes, magic eye start. <laughs> Nat one. Yeah. Ooh, uh, okay. Why yeah, don't we don't really can't do this anymore. I gotta, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to refresh. That should be incentive for you. Yeah. <laughs> You can go ahead and make the roll, see if you can get it to work with it, uh, with a refresh. Okay. Like, I had stuff stuck on the screen. I couldn't get, like, rid of the... the yep. it happens the sometimes. ...stuff, so... Uh, I'm just trying that again. There. There it is. Okay. Okay, got it. Let's do that magic I start. That is a hit. Not a lot okay. of damage, but it is a hit. Yep. Okay. All right, and, and then uh, your uh, for Yazak is he moving? And then we'll be done that round. Oh, I actually get to move with uh, right into contact with Amar. You did offer yourself up, and he's uh, more than happy to accommodate. Oh, yeah. All right, so let's roll initiative, guys. Uh, Will, you kicked my ass with initiative last time. Round two. Everyone decide what you're doing. Let's see. I'm going to... Um, come on. What is it? <laughs> Missile, yeah. Yeah, Fee. Start, and this is number one, yeah. That's so almost so... Uh, two, four, and one. Okay. And then Amar, what are you doing this round? Yeah. Uh, since he's... Well, you know what? To hell with it. You kung fu it up? Oh, yeah. We st oh, we still have move, right, Kev? Uh, holy shit. Oh, yeah, right, you're wasted, too. Um, oh yeah, if you're hasted, did you make your second? You could have made f six attacks, I guess. Oh, you're muted, Carl. Oh, you're... Yeah, so he would have. So this one also would have moved to there. Okay. Yeah, I'm. I moved, and then I'm shooting. I shot twice. Oh, did you shoot twice? Yeah. Uh, I mean, the third one wouldn't count because I, I. If you move, you can only shoot twice. Oh, I, I see what you mean. Right, 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 right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I've shot four times. I think if I'm static, I can fire six times. Yeah, you can fire, so you get six shots off this time, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so then, guys. Uh, Will, would you kindly beat my two? Come on, baby. All we need is... There you nice. go, there you go, there you go. So melee first Amar, go ahead. All right, here we go. Four attacks. Amar's really upset. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you were sort of mind-linked with these things as he died, too, so... Mm-hmm. <sighs> that is not a hit. But good opening move, not a hit. Not a hit. Oh, come on. <laughs> now oh, what the hell? the wrong direction. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. What the hell? What are these? A five? A two? This is not a good start, guys. A one. Oh, wait a minute. 11. I used the wrong, I used the wrong weapon. Okay, so go ahead. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay, that's, go ahead, that's we have four fault. attacks. Here we go. That's better. There you go. 
There you go. So that's, uh, let's they see here, 16, weapon, 22, 28 damage. Wow. There you go. All right. Oh, that cut him down a bit. All right. Uh, then it is, uh, let's see here. Uh, I guess. Yossi's melee. Yossi, yeah, go ahead. He's going to move in his half and an attack from the rear. Now, this isn't flanking or anything, is it? Nope. Or, okay. Nope. Um, this thing's too damn big. Uh, so you get uh, four attacks. 20. Yeah, 40, yep. 20. Uh, two hits. Two That's hits. Uh, yep. 2d8 damage. Okay, 14 no, damage. Oh, and uh, Robert, would you mind moving your either your mic away from your keyboard or your keyboard away from your mic? It's, it's a laptop, so. Oh, okay. So uh, I'll, I'll try to I'll try to do a little software. I can do a software. Okay. Here we go. Sorry. That's okay. Uh, it's one hit with a bite. Go ahead and roll two d six. Two d six. Oh, good. nice. No, 2d6, sorry. Yeah, 2d6. Okay. Okay, no, that's good. That's good hit. All right, now, uh, the tail slash against... Oh, I hit Yazik. Uh, so Yazik takes... Oh, wrong thing, wrong thing. Go. And I'm going to try and get uh, this done quickly here. 12 points of damage for Yazik. And then the bite on Amar is a hit. Amar... Ooh. You can Astonishing Fortune this, but you will be taking 15 points of damage. I think I can live with 15 right now. Okay. Yeah. Uh, then it is Missile. Carl. All right. So since I haven't moved, I'm going to uh, unload. So six, six attacks shots. here. All right. Let's see. Sounds good. Nice. Hit, hit, hit. Ooh. Wow. Miss. Uh, oh, one more. Oh. Two, Two more. Four is a... Uh, the one doesn't matter? The one doesn't matter, no, no. You have Hobbs to think. Oh, it does matter, apparently, because you miss those other three. Uh, but that is 31 points of damage. 31 points of damage. Yeah, that's nice. pretty badass. Okay. <laughs> These blasters are hitting. You could spend a point of Astonishing Fortune to re-roll one of those, if you like. Um, how many do we have? Two, yeah, left. two left. I'd rather save them for... Yeah, Amar, you know, if Amar needs him. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Good call. All right. Uh, then it, I believe that is the end of the, that's the end of the interesting stuff that's happening, right? Oh, yeah. magic. Uh, I, got from, one, sorry. I got one magic. Yep. Yep. I, you know. Go ahead, start. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. Let's hit again. All right. So let's just quickly, are we doing the exact same thing next round, guys? Yes. Okay. Let's repeat so, this yeah. off. Yeah. I mean, and that'll, and yeah. then if he will have to drop the PDW or whatever, because he'll be out charges uh, like alien yeah right. be my six controlling it Jeez. uh robert still uh, oh no robert, um uh, will still kicking my ass okay come on will here it comes here it comes come on oh no <laughs> no all right so there tail you go. tail on yazik uh is actually a hit uh yazik takes 22 points. Oh, and he's, well, he's, well, no, he's dead. Yeah, so it shatters him like a, you know, like a bird flying into a window. Uh, and then Amar, uh, that is a hit. Uh, that would be 17 points of damage. You want to staunch you fortune that, or are you taking it? Be down to 10? Yeah, let's do that one. Okay. So you sort of like, I'm picturing it's snout comes to try and get you. You jump in there, kind of like kicking back on its snout and phew, lands down. Yep. Uh, then we have you guys, uh, melee from Amar. Now let's go. Four attacks here. Uh, miss, hit, miss, nice. miss. Ugh. Okay. That's nine points of damage. Uh, if he's on uh, missile. Yep. All right. So here it goes. Go. Nice. Hit, hit. Nice. Miss. Miss. You still have two more. Not oh. one, and then one more. Hit. There you go. That's 11, yeah. 21, 30 points of damage. Take a look at this, guys. Oh! Do, do you want an astonishing point, one of those? Yeah, you actually, you know what? If you astonishing fortune one of those, you might. Uh... Take him. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. What do you think? It's up. Well, it's up to you. You're, you're, we would still have one left. Of the beast. We would still uh, have one left. 
No, no, you, this will be the last one. No, no last one. <clears throat> this, will be, uh, this is our last one. Uh, uh, no, okay. no, yeah, I I think we could get him in the next round. Okay. Did you already okay. do your thing? No, I haven't done the ice start, so here's the ice start. Uh, ice start hits. Oh, nice. oh my God. <laughs> no way. <laughs> <laughs> Barely, Ross. Let's quickly roll initiative for this final round, guys. Yep. Let's see if we can yep. get this down before Carl's to leave. Yep. Oh. Whoever's. Carl, you're up. Damn. I know. Oh, uh, boy. Come on, you got it. Here it comes. Whoa. Oh. Nope. So okay. just the bite on a mar. Here we go. Nat one. <laughs> Nat <laughs> one. Yes. He bites himself. <laughs> so he misses. <laughs> Amar, what do you got? He starts chasing his tail. <laughs> and there that's enough. Go. So the first one, Oof. we talked about you sort of scampering up on his uh, on his nose as you're going. I think you just leap in the air and then come down with a rah, and it's a hit that sort of ripples out. And this whole thing comes like slam into the ground with you on its snout and a dead crocodile god. Mm. All right, wow. Carl. I know you got a boogie, uh, so we'll, we'll yeah. po I'll post in uh, Discord what your XP is for this. Okay. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Thanks for the game, Carl. So enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah. Sorry, I had a book. We have an event. Right, no we'll worries. Yep. Okay. It's a lot of fun. Thanks for coming. All yeah, right. See you. <laughs> see you tomorrow, so, Kevin. Yeah, yeah. We'll see you tomorrow. Um, so then, guys, what uh, happens next? Oh, let's take our mid-session break, actually. We haven't done that yet. Yeah. yeah. Let's take yeah, our mid-session break. That. We'll let's... refresh uh, our beverages, and then we'll come back and see what the fallout of a uh, clash with the crocodile god is. So back momentarily, <laughs> folks. All right. Oh, that was uh, much better than the last time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think I like haste, although, yeah, now I'm one more. Oh, I love haste. Yeah. Uh, see, um, that's the thing. Once, I think it's, I'm trying to remember, I think it's when I get to 11th level, mm -hmm. I no longer age. Oh, nice. Yeah. Let's see, my character's age was a little bit older when I had him start. Not too old. I mean, he's you know, 27, but now he's 29. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes planning a little bit before the battle is a good thing. Well, you know, and the silly thing is, like, we didn't even use any of the... Uh... 
magic items. Right. What do we have that would be... Oh, I mean, you know, we could have used, like, those beetles. Ah, true. Yes. Yes, yes. And the <laughs> leech, you know? Yep. I, the problem with those, though, I always have an issue with those in combat. I mean, uh, Zard was planning to... Once his once the um, magic darts ran out, he was going to basically take most of his use the sponge on himself. Um, what is he? He's got fourteen hit points. He probably would have like taken ten hit points or something. I mean, maybe like six or seven hit points off, and then tried to get next to Amar at some point so he could slap that on him. But, but the, the problem well, I think is haste really. Yeah. Helped us. Yeah. Uh, plus, plus the two allies, even if one got squashed right away. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, it didn't hurt that they were hasted either. No, that's six attacks. I mean, well, effectively, yeah. what it meant, what it meant is, is after the one got eaten, that effectively we still had two, <laughs> two of them. Yeah, basically. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, the problem I always have with things like like the beetles and whatnot, it's like when you're in combat, it's like, it's so hard to use them. Um, well, I mean, to me, it's like, you know, you make that move on the first phase yeah. and then you eat the beetle or whatever on the next mm -hmm. phase. Yeah. So you don't, you don't attack or anything, you know, you don't deal damage. I'll say that you don't right. deal damage that round, but the next round you'll be more likely to. Yeah. Mm. All right. So with this thing defeated, with C-Tech defeated, what do you guys wish to do next? Um. Do we think yeah. this thing? Well, I mean, we've never thoroughly searched this room. No. Do we? Think even this... I didn't do that. Yeah. Do we think this thing actually? I mean, I keep thinking of it as a god, and I'm like, hey, it is, but it's like, if we cut it open, would it have remnants of... I was gonna say, Amar's like, it's not a god, you can't kill gods. Yeah. And, but of course the digestive juice, I'm just worried like an alien type, they would cut it open like this <laughs> fast yeah. wash. And... <laughs> yeah, it's like, I mean, a part of Amar wants to, you know, rescue the... Um, the I'm Terran trying to think if any of you guys would... Because it's um, like alligators, right? Like they eat stones to assist with their digestion, mm -hmm. right? So they're, the the myth of things having, you know, things inside their bellies, like dragon swallowing, treasure and shit like that is in a way, roundabout way has some basis in fact because yeah. they will eat this shit to, to yeah. you know, to assist in digestion. This thing, if it was going to keep a hoard... <laughs> That's where it'd be. <laughs> it is a huge, I mean, this is a massive undertaking though, because this is effectively like cutting into a whale, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I still think it'd be worth it. Yeah, I, I'm kind of with you. I mean, yeah. Amar's a fisherman, so yeah. he understands about gutting animals. Yep. I'm sorry, sorry, I grew up in a fishing village. I mean, probably, okay, right on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. Yep. Let's do okay. it. Yeah, let's cut it open. So let's do this. Inside. We need to generate some uh, treasure then. Yeah. Treasure. We need to uh, keep an ear out in case uh, anything decides to come down this way, huh? Uh, this, will... Every time I Sark? hear treasure, it's, uh, I think of it, there's that episode of um, uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000 where they're talking about treasure, and he says, hey, you know that old play, Measure by Measure? <laughs> 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 Measure, my treasure. Measure. Measure once, watch cut twice. Or measure twice, cut once, I guess. All right, all right, all right, all right. So let's see here. This then is going to have what uh, treasure type? <laughs> all right, guys. Give us, uh, let's see here. Each of you, would you give us a 2d4 roll, please? 2d4. Thanks, sour. 2d4. 4 and 4. Nice. Way to keep to the odds there, guys. 
Uh, then would you kindly each give us a 3d10 roll? Okay. Let's see. A 3d10 coming there, Amar. Did I? Oh. I clicked on it. What the hell? Oh, there you go. Sorry about okay. that. No, that's okay. No harm, no foul. Okay, so now, 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 now. Oh, man. It's a good treasure type. It's level a real five, good level, treasure type. Level five, here I come. Okay. Well, you got to identify all this crap first. I know. Right? But so. I can do that. I can do that tomorrow. Yep. All right, so let's hear. Um, not that, not that. Here we go. Okay. Nice. Nice. Would you each give us a D1000 roll, please? Oh, I have to manually do that. Sorry. Yeah, I want to use my real dice for that. <laughs> <laughs> 410. Nice. Hmm. I'm going to write it so I can actually read it. This time in Amar 155. Okay. Uh, then, would you once uh, give us another uh, percentile or uh, per, uh, D1000 roll, please? Ooh. Eight, High numbers, I have a feeling I'm good. Okay, 832. Ooh. I'm on both ends of the spectrum. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And let's see here. 343. Yes. Once on something like that, I hope somebody rolls a 1000. Oh my God. Okay. Man, oh man. Uh, once again, uh, two more, please. All right. 30. Oh, well. And. 741, so 30. Whew. And 741 is... Hmm. Okay. Uh, then, uh, one more time, please. One seventy three. Uh, and six fifty one. Okay. Hmm. And okay, that would not be in there. Uh, another percentile roll, please. Or uh, not percent out, but what do you call it? D uh, one thousand from each of you. Eight thirty. So six twenty. Uh, six seventy eight. Two seventy eight. Two seventy eight. Yeah, reading is challenging. <laughs> words is hard. Yeah, words is very hard. And I can't too add. <laughs> Thirteen. Okay. And that would not have survived. Uh, this may have. Two more uh, D1000 rolls, please. Turns out a god has a lot of crap saved up over the years. Gods are hoarders. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. And H27. All right. Uh, then, uh, same thing again, please. All right. <laughs> okay, four, uh, four sixty four. All 
right, and then 568 uh, is all right. Uh, that would not have survived. That would not have. Oh, that could have survived. Uh, two more for or uh, D1000 rolls, please. It's a 550 and 112. 112 is okay, and then 550 is. Uh, that, that would have been destroyed, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, then... No. Uh, one more percentile roll, please. Or a percentile. Same thing. I'm going to keep saying percentile, but you know what I mean. Yeah, that's like me. I'm like, I know what he's talking about. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so... Control. I'll just say dice roll. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That'll work. Do it again. Yeah. <laughs> and again. <laughs> One Ooh. more time with feeling. That is interesting. All right. Uh, then, 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 then. Uh, again. <laughs> <laughs> so we got a 577. Oh, both of us. Okay. <clears throat> okay, and what is and seven thirty six? Mm. It's also interesting. And for one final time, again, 690 and 277. Hmm. Okay. All right, and 690. 690. Right. Now, here's what I'm going to assume. You guys are going to take as much downtime as is necessary to identify all this crap. Mm -hmm. Is Am I correct in thinking that? Yeah. Yep. So we can cut to uh, sort of you guys spending time at... Because uh, uh, in spite of the death of your uh, two allies, whose bodies you will be able to recover, because one was just you know broken by the uh, right. uh, tail, the other one you recovered. Um, let's move ourselves up here. Boom. Now we're cut into Yaz's stomach. No. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's see here. Get rid of that. Turn that off. And I like this one. It's not drowning you guys out. All right, so whew, we got some math to do here now, sir. <laughs> All right, so the XP for this, I need to hooba chuba. That's gonna be a lot. That's what a, that's what a fourth level uh, person likes to hear. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's uh, what he called. Um, he's got. Uh, the thing you've you fought, you may have guessed, has just a butt ton of uh, hit points. So, and we're only splitting it between three of us, so that's pretty good. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, so that is five. Okay. All 
all right now let's figure out what these items are okay so first off here's what you found in there two yeah. rings two rods two staves two wands a crown a phylactery gloves a hand a dagger a broadsword a horn a shield a candle a bridle an orb and two helmets better not be the hand of Vecna yeah. <laughs> I got up to shield and then I lost count yeah well we're gonna we're gonna have to go through one by one here let's do the rings first here we'll okay. start the order I've got these on the uh, thing here so mm -hmm. um, and for those uh, listening at home, because um, Ash is uh, completely compatible with that AD&D, uh, I have used my Encyclopedia Magica to generate the horde because okay, I just cool. find it gives more interesting... Uh, I, the, I like the magic items out of uh, Ash, but I, I think there's more... For a horde like this, I want a little more oddball. We get some great oddball results from uh, this. Okay. Let's see here. So, first one is let's see here and you know what only 30 percent of your horde is uh is uh, cursed so you know it's good <laughs> <laughs> only 30. <laughs> is he joking i don't know uh, uh yeah it's, it's... <laughs> <laughs> and, and does identify actually detect whether it's cursed does not, not. no uh, yeah. no okay. I, I don't think there are any editions of dnd where it does that Okay. I know it doesn't really? in fifth, and I know it doesn't in second. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and I, I don't know if it. I don't think it does in three point five. Yeah. Um, I don't remember in fourth, because you sort of like you don't cast identify in fourth from what I remember. You sort of know what it does. Yeah. It's, it was a roundabout way of screwing you over. <laughs> um. Okay. Let's see here. Um. um, um all right. So the first one. And I'll post all the rules for this in uh, on Discord as well, too, so you guys aren't scrambling to write everything down. Okay. Um, you can, I mean, you feel free, you can, but... Uh, I was going to say, I like my dead panel. Sure, sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, so first thing is a ring of impersonation. This ring functions as a hat of disguise. So you can use the ring to disguise yourself. That's actually going to be quite handy, I imagine. Now let's see what the rules are for how to disguise. Vote is you, vote is That's always fun. <laughs> yeah. It's the same magic item, just a different form. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they're like, as a kid, though, like, how mind blowing was that stuff? Wait, what? You can break the rules? Cool. Oh my god. Oh, yeah. yeah. Love that stuff. Okay, how to, how to disguise. <clears throat> Excuse me. Alters the wearer's facial features into any desired likeness. Cannot bestow special abilities other than appearance change. So changes your face. Okay. Uh, that is the ring of impersonation. Next is... Let's see here. Oh, there's an additional thing here. Wood, 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 wood. Uh, Robert, would you give us a percentile roll? This time I actually do need percentile. Mm. This is a ring of invisibility. Mm -hmm. All right, then we have our rods. Rod, first one is... We have our Roderick's. <laughs> Roderick? Rod of Smiting. Uh, this rod is a plus three magic weapon that inflicts 1d8 plus three points of damage. Against golems, the rod causes 2d8 plus 6 points of damage, and any score of 20 or better destroys the golem. That would apply to robotatons as well. 
Any hit on a golem uh, or robotaton drains one charge. Uh, the rod causes normal damage, 1d8 plus 3 versus creatures from the outer plane, so the outer dark in this setting. Any score of 20 or better draws off one charge and causes triple damage. It cannot be recharged. Let's see how many charges it has. Oh. The rod has... Give us a 1d10 roll, please. Either of you guys. Okay. Seven. Ah. It has 47 <laughs> charges left. Okay. Okay. Seven charges. And that is... It's a lot of XP for that sucker. <laughs> we use oh. that back in the tower. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it probably has uh, markings of uh, Atlantean design on it, in fact. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, next is... A rod... Ooh. <laughs> Rod of elemental fire. Hmm. Three feet long, decorated with carved skulls and leering faces, it exudes a constant stream of gray smoke from the tip. And when you activate it, we roll randomly to see what happens. Oh. <laughs> Could shoot a fireball, could make a wall of fire, could summon fire elementals, could summon an uh, azers. Mm. So it's a pretty unpredictable yeah. uh, item. Sarge will give that one to somebody else. Yeah, he definitely doesn't want that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, and a little bit of these on, okay? Okay, uh, next is Stavs. Okay, is that in this book or next one? Next one. Okay. So, let's see here. I could be you... really meta about this and have to roll 1d100 to see which book uh, Kev takes it from. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, let's see here. Hmm. One second here. I think I recorded this wrong. Where, 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 where? Here we go. You know, the, um, um, Index in this, though, is fucking amazing for the uh, thing. Really, really, you can look up stuff by uh, name or by property or by whatever. Like, it's really quite uh, great. That's the way I feel about those pre-spell compendiums. Totally. Yeah, yeah. It's really, really well laid out. Because, you know, when you get all these different spheres, mm -hmm. you can search by sphere, which is wonderful. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Um, uh, would you kindly give us a 1d8 roll, please? Go ahead, Robert. Okay. Ooh, a staff of trap detection. That would be really useful in that tower. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 By the way, uh, did we have to roll charges for the elemental fire rod? Uh, the rod. Uh, yes, you do. 1d10 for that as well, too, please. And probably this also. Okay, so 42 charges in that. Okay. And so this, and the staff of trap protection does not. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, you must hold the uh, staff and utter the command word. If it's positive, it indicates this by a gentle tug in the direction of the thing detected. Otherwise, it does not have charges with it. You can use it as many times as you like. That is the staff of detection. Next, A is. And, yeah, staff. Okay, let's see here. No 
Oh, that is interesting. All right, so this is uh, Rill uh, Taver's staff. And this sucker is a, a f so the staff affords plus three protection on saving throws and armor class for up to six beings touching it. This power is automatic and drains no charges. Upon hmm. command, the staff can detect magic in a 20 foot radius centered on the staff. The staff bearer can clearly see magical auras, but the staff does not enable others to do, uh, not touching it to do so. No charges are drained from that. The bearer can also exercise telekinesis on any object touched by the staff. This function must be exercised as the touch is made, is activated and ended by a silent force of will and drains three charges plus one charge per round after the round of activation. Uh, moving creatures and objects requires a successful attack roll to be touched. Uh, any living, conscious, unwilling uh, creature receives a saving throw each round to break free. Otherwise, telekinesis is identical to the fifth level uh, wizard spell, but the staff's weight limit is 1,000 pounds. Once telekinetic control is lost over an object, it cannot be regained except by touching the target again and reactivating the power. And the number of charges in the staff. Uh, would one of you give us a 1d6 roll, please? All right. 1d6. That's five, nice. 24 charges left. Okay. Uh, next is ooh, wands. We're into wand territory, guys. Any of these blowing your socks off yet? Uh, they're definitely interesting. Yeah, I like the. Spray. I'd, I'd love to see the, the table for the elemental fire rod. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty bonkers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. I can only imagine. Okay, down, 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 down. Well, it's kind of like the we had uh, one of the guys uh, in our legacy of the Crystal Shard game uh, recovered a bag of tricks, and the first thing he pulled oh. out was a bison. Buffalo. <laughs> All right. Oof. Uh, so this is a wand of lightning. This only works for spellcasters. The wand casts lightning bolts at 15th level, and it carries seven charges recharging itself, one charge for every week in which there is a local thunderstorm. <laughs> so the wand of lightning. Seems pretty useful in the jungle. I'm not sure about on the uh, frozen plains of Thule. I'm not sure it would ever charge. <laughs> oh, you can have uh, uh, thunder snowstorms. Okay. Sure. Believe you me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's right. I do remember a few. But... <laughs> okay. Next is. Where is it here? Does lightning bolt go up in power as level? I'm sure it says what <laughs> hmm. what level. Exit. So this is um, Fandor's Wand of Fire. Uh, this wand can expend two charges to touch a weapon and temper that weapon as if it had passed through the smithy's forge many times. This operation adds plus two to attack and damage for the next ten attack rolls. After that, the weapon reverts to its normal status. Plus, it also performs as a wand of fire. Hmm. And okay, wand of fire. I think, I think the uh, lightning bolt wand is... Uh, is wand of fire allows you to cast uh, burning hands, pyrotechnics, fireball, and wall of fire. Wow. Hey. And it has. Uh, would you give us a 1d20 roll, please? Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, Actually, go ahead. For some reason, I have a. Okay. My, yeah. Five. Okay, so then it has 85 charges. Cool. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Nice. 
What that is that one called, Kev? Fandor's Wand of Fire. So now it's to the crown. Okay, here we go. Next is the crown. Yeah. Let's see, I think that's in book one here. It's a candle. Nope. Crowns, 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 crowns. Crown, here we go. Okay. <laughs> so this magical circlet of metal is set with teeth and bones of various creatures. Um, it is a protective item conferring immunity to natural and magical fear, to paralyzation, and to petrification. The wearer cannot be magically aged by a ghost or harmed by chilling attacks, uh, attack, such as the touch of a lich. Uh, the wearer of the, of the crown receives a plus four bonus against all undead attacks for which saving throws are allowed. Once every nine turns, the wearer of, of the crown uh, can disrupt undead as with a mesa disruption by touch and act of will. A successful attack roll is required. Uh... And the wearer of the crown is subject to any side effects of the contact, so like, you know, level drain. The attack misses or fails. The power of the crown that was called is wasted, and that power is ineffective until nine more turns have passed. That's like an hour and a half. The wearer That's what of we dark say the turns like. Yeah, it turns. Yeah. Uh, the wearer of a dark crown can see with ninety foot infravision and always knows undead normally visible, not concealed behind barriers or within the closed coffins for what they are. Wow. A crown wearer looking at a skeleton lying in a casket can tell instantly whether it's undead or just a normal skeleton. <laughs> nice. Okay, so that is the dark crown. I'm not feeling this will be useful back in Tule. I don't know why. Yeah, that's a powerful uh, or yeah. a neat uh, and evocative kind of item. Yeah. Alright, so next thing is... Yeah, it's really good for a cleric or something. Mm-hmm. Sure, mm. quite fits. Well, I don't know. Wonder if uh the phylactery. Sanico. Yeah. Phylactery is over here. <laughs> Gotta love those items that are like just you think maybe there's enough pages. Is it in this book? No, it's in the next one. Fuck. Nope. Yeah. So it'll be right at the back of this one here. I here gotta go. say though, the wand of lightning, I mean that's fifteen D six damage. Yeah. It's, it's... I can't remember if it caps at 10d6 in, uh, uh, what do you call it? In, um, Ash, though. Because Ash, some of those, uh, they, your level cap is at level 12, so. Oh, yeah, we'll probably cap at 12. But... Yeah. Okay, so let's hear. Uh, this is. Ooh. A phylactery? of long years. The device uh, slows the aging process by 25% for as long as the priest wears it, so you need to be a priest. Uh, the reduction applies even to magical aging. So that haste <laughs> that uh, yeah. Malo is so fond of casting would actually only age you by three months as opposed to a year. Um, yeah, so that's the only thing it does. So it's the phylactery of, of long years needs to be wielded by or worn by a uh, priest. Uh, so a monk would also count for that as well. I was fixing to say, since it's using priest, which is in AD&D, the big. Yeah. So yeah. Here's Shaman okay. Rune Graver Priest Monk Druid. All right. That. Next up. Gloves. Gloves. Let's see, is that under... Probably this one here. Yep. Here These go. are the gloves of warming. They keep your hands warm. Let's see. <laughs> These are. I'll be wearing my gloves. I've got some awesome, uh, like, thin slate kind of gloves. 
uh, for Midweather. I got to do pooper scooper detail today. That's my exciting afternoon. <laughs> so be heading out and get that done before we get more snow. Holy smokes. So these are gloves of lightning. Uh, these ornate magical gloves, usable by all classes, are powerful weapons. Once every three rounds, and up to three times per day, the wearer may point at a single target and fire a strong burst of electricity that automatically strikes, dealing 8d6 points of damage, uh, and a half on a successful save versus uh, device. Uh, they cannot be worn with gauntlets, though. And both gloves are necessary to follow the lightning. So I guess you need to have free hands in order to do that. So those are the gloves of lightning. And I can really start opening up on you guys now. Yeah, I know. I, just, I was just thinking Kev's about to bring his fang dragon. Yeah, <laughs> damn right. Uh, you know, the only addition of D&D &D without a fang dragon thus far is fifth. A little disappointed. That brand new uh, dragon, uh, the new dragon book is pretty cool, but really could have loved to see uh, some, uh, what do you call it? Fang Dragon uh, Dragonborn. Ooh, pretty awesome. And there's a candle. Okay, so this is an interesting one. You, this is uh, a an life-sized, uh, lifelike, disembodied hand fashioned from iron alloy. A helping hand's enchantment makes it move and flex fluidly, and it flies about at the direction of the wielder, who is the last being to speak a secret binding word when touching it. The helping hand resists rust and all magic, uh, takes 29 points of damage, AC zero, uh, can't travel more than 600 feet from the wielder or control is lost Unless another being takes control of a helping hand by touching it and uttering its command word Control over a hand that's passed out of range can be restored whenever you get into range again um, Helping hand can't carry anything or make spell casting gestures, but it can point uh, Hold open books push small objects up to dagger size along a fairly smooth surface tug at knots and so on the hand can fly at beings, attacking at Thacko 11 for 1d2 points of damage. A strike can break eggs, glass, pottery, or other fragile objects, or spoil the aim of anyone readying a spell or missile weapon as the DM chooses. Helping hands are often used to punch or slap uh, warning gongs, or sometimes to trigger traps. Um, the wielder of a helping hand can see, in uh, scare quotes, from the hand using a spherical 20-foot range. They can use this ability to spy, watch strategic areas, or use the hand to signal directions or intentions. Operating a helping hand requires a mental concentration that precludes spellcasting in the same round, but allows normal physical activity. If a hand wielder is climbing, swimming, or balancing precariously while operating the hand, all dex checks are made at minus one. Uh, and if engaged in combat, take minus one to hit. It can be commanded to go on as it was before when concentrating ceases. If no instructions are given, it hangs or lies on a surface motionless. That's interesting. Okay, so helping hand. And next up is helmet. Oh, that's the one that everyone's going to be clamoring for. Helping hand. <laughs> mm. This is a Amazonian style helmet uh, that you can... Oof. It creates an anti-magic shell within 10 feet.
So that's both cool, but not great for those of you who are spellcasters. Yeah, so that... So the idea would be somebody wouldn't be able to attack you with magic as well? Uh, wouldn't be able to attack or benefit. Yeah, the upside is okay. you're... Yeah. So that would be good for, like, Amar going into... Going up and sending mm. magic creatures. Yeah, yeah uh, but I can't use it, because it's a uh, helmet. Oh, uh, right. I can't uh, use next... any type of armor. Kane, Kane, whenever he comes back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I've got the ring of spell turning. So my ring is, helps me a lot with magic. Okay. Yep. Uh, there is, then next is a helm of reading. You're able to read any writing, regardless of the language or magical properties of the script. Uh, does not allow you to do spell scrolls, but um, you can. Uh, it is fragile, however, and is destroyed if the wearer is killed. Any hit on the wearer, ten percent could destroy the helm. So you're gonna to want to be careful when you're bringing this thing out. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm reading. Next is a candle. All right. This is it. This is the. This is the real prize of the horde. I can feel it. <laughs> you never know with AD&D, though. Yeah, I know. Right? Like, so many of these things are such oddball uh, items. I like that hand of... Uh, uh, helping yeah. hand, though. That's a really evocative item. Yeah, I do. You can see uh, clever players getting a lot of use out of that. Um, just found out we had all the shit for the siege of Iron Fan Keep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this uh, next is a candle of disruption. Uh, mm -hmm. This candle Ooh. is the bane of undead when lit. Skeletons, zombies, ghouls, and shadows suffer 3d4 damage per round while in the area. Whites mm -hmm. and ghasts suffer 2d4 damage, and all other higher level undead suffer 1d4 damage. If a priest or paladin lights the candle, that character's power to turn undead increases by two levels as long as the uh, candle is lit. Hmm. That's nice. That's actually pretty nice. And then let's see here. How long do candles last? It's a large candle, so this burns for four hours. Wow. Candle of Disruption. All right. Got that. And we have four more. No, we've got six more things left here. Next is Bridal. Let's see here. Where has this thing been feeding uh, as well? Yeah. Anywhere it wants. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, it was feeding from people who like fire and lightning. Yeah, I'm sort of like <laughs> uh, mentally cr creating a thing of like, there's clearly some powerful priest that it consumed at some point that would have been wearing that yep. crown and carrying the the candle. Uh, yeah, there's some kind of They're elemental. Probably the smiting. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and that Rob is smiting as well too. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. The phylactery probably as well too. And yeah, I was gonna say the phylactery. Yep. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I'm saying phylactery so weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's like file actory. Uh, all right. Next is whoa, bridle of control. Bridle automatically calms the mount, preventing all non-magical fear. Flying dragons, nearby snakes, and other situations that could uh, cause unprotected animals to falter or flee do not affect the mount. Continuous effect while worn. Wowzers. Oof. Now somebody has to get a horse. Fuck horses. You guys are in uh, the jungle. Get yourself a dinosaur. True. Yeah, true. <laughs> See that uh, the old uh, Triceratops mount? That's good stuff. All righty. So that's the bridle of control. Next is an orb. Those are always fun. Be in volume. Dose. The orb is okay. Oh, 
Oh my. So this orb, this is the orb of SeaTech. Ooh. It is an intelligent item. Uh-oh. <laughs> this may not be a magical item you found in it. This may be the congealed essence of the god. Oh, wow. So this... Yeah, I need to. I need. I don't remember the rules for intelligent items, so I need to look at that up between now and next session. Um, because you may need to contest this, but it has a bunch of really interesting abilities if you can master the uh, orb of Sea Tech, including like moving at double speed, a death spell, conjuring uh, elementals, if freights or Invisible Stalkers, and um, Legend Lore or Commune. Yeah, wow. Uh, makes you immune to disease. You can levitate uh, at will. Ch charm Monster with a massive penalty to saving throws twice a day. So if you can get, if you can master CTEX will, there's some huge benefits you can get from this thing. But it is a, the manifestation of a malign god's will. So we'll have to see. It might attempt to control. Oh, most definitely we'll try and control whoever's there. <laughs> yes. You ever read the Dragonland mm -hmm. saga? <laughs> that shit never Way ends well. Back. <laughs> All right. And next up is a horn. Okay, let's see here. Horn, 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 horn. Here we go. Oh, okay. Under, if it's under instrument or wind instrument. Let's see here. Okay. Uh, here we go. Sorry, guys, just trying to find wind instrument. Definitely keep stuff. Oh, here we go. Okay. Okay, so this is a horn of animal calls. And what it does, uh, this wooden instrument painted red with tiny silhouettes of various animals along the side. You close your eyes, you picture an animal, then you blow the horn. It's indistinguishable from the cry of the actual animal. The instrument can be used to call particular animals or frighten them away. Um, and then the DM determines the effect of the particular use of the horn. It might summon 2d4 animals. Um, yeah. So it is a horn that you can use to mentally picture and summon animals. And there's a shield. Okay, let me use number three. There we go. Shield, shield, shield. Yes. Who? Uh, this shield can be charged on command. Um, oh, as a uh, electricity uh, thing. So you charge. You can charge it up. But instead of inflicting damage, it causes the loss of one of the opponent's levels or hit dice. Whoa. <laughs> uh, they can make a save, and it can drain one level or hit die per day, but any number of saving throws can be made before this occurs. So it, it's only one successful thing. So this is a shield of energy drain. Okay. 
Okay. And then two more left here, guys. Just the weapons. Just the weapons, yeah. yeah. There we go. I'm going to get level 5 after this, but... <laughs> cool. Uh, so this one is uh, a dagger called Longtooth. Uh, dagger, however, does 1d6 damage and acts as a plus 2 weapon. So it's a plus 2 uh, dagger that does 1d6 damage and... It penetrates wood and stone as easily as it enters softer materials, inflicting maximum damage against either substance. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, and then... Final thing... is... Gonna be, I think... here... Woof. So this is a uh, broadsword. Plus four. Bob. And it can cast Feeble Mind twice per day. I think broadswords do the same as uh, long swords in this game, if I recall. I think you're right. Could be wrong about that, but I don't think there's a material difference they make between the two. So your missile weapons, melee weapons. Mm -hmm. Long or long, broad. broad, yeah, yeah. So it's one d eight damage. Mm -hmm. A plus four to hit, plus four to damage. All right. That is everything. So we have Ring of Impersonation, Ring of Invisibility, Rod of Smiting, Rod of Elemental Fire, Staff of Trap Detection, um, Rillin something or other Staff, uh, Wand of Lightning, uh, Fandross's uh, Wand of Fire, a Dark Crown, a Phylactery of Long Years, Gloves of Lightning, Helping Hand, uh, the um, Amazon's Helm, Helm of Reading, Candle of D Disruption, Bridle of Control, Orb of Sea Tech, Horn of Animal Calling, Shield of Energy Drain, Long Tooth, and this Feeble Minding plus four broadsword. That is quite the haul, guys. Let's do some XP calculations. Let's see. One billion. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'll. I'm pretty sure I'll have to do the. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how much it's going to be. But it's like it could be a, a two-level thing where. Well, I, one, one XP short. Yeah, I was going to say I do have bad news about that because you can't yeah. uh, just like yeah, you. No, no. no, I know it would be it would be one XP short, but can't. still. Give me a second here. Go. That's all right. That's the largest treasure hoard I've rolled for AD and D since we started playing again. Yeah. Okay. Uh, divided by three times. 1.1. Alright guys, so for today, having gone back, fought and defeated a crocodile god, each of you guys, and recovered and identified its horde, each of you guys recovered, or earned, 
21,871 XP. One Good Lord. Uh, yeah. Okay. All oh right. My. So that That's is exactly huge. Uh, I will put all yeah, the, um, what do you call it, all the XP and whatnot in uh, in the Discord server uh, as well too, and the, and the yeah, gear so you guys can go through and pick. Any of the gear particularly jump out for you guys at this point, for your characters? The Ring of Invisibility and the Dagger. Those are the two that Amar is most immediately interested in. Mm -hmm. How about Sard? Yeah, uh... I mean, so it's funny, all the fire stuff, like normally I'll be all over, but the fact that he's into cold, I'm like, mm -hmm. but maybe, maybe one of the lightning, oh. one of the lightning. Of some, oh, the gloves some, or uh, Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the main, probably the main thing. And uh, what, what did the um, relative staff do again? I can't, that was the uh, plus three protection. Yep. Oh, that's one with protection, one. and then it can use telekinesis to, if it's touching yeah. stuff, to move it around. Yeah, I think that was the other one I was looking at. Mm -hmm. It's like, Helm of Reading would be perfect, except he, he already has the spell that lets you uh, read magic and read, sorry, read, um, read in language, so. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it also, the the uh, Helm allows you to also read uh, magic yep. unerringly, yep. Uh, too, so you can't use yep. the scrolls but you wouldn't have to cast read magic to actually read scrolls then well he actually has that ability so it's it's a class ability oh okay to read magic um, all right well then guys we will bring this session to a close uh so congratulations did uh, amar ding again or is that not enough oh no 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 but uh, yeah i won't ding again until 160 but that gets me a heck of a lot closer nice <laughs> and and i heck did what i thought lot. i would barely but yeah you're third level uh, now i'm third no i'm fifth fifth level now oh sorry, third level. nice level. Sorry, fifth level and um, one point shy of six. One away from six. Yeah. Fuck yeah! Awesome. All right, uh, then for those listening at home, uh, thank you so much for joining us for uh, session sixty-six of the uh, Reavers of Tule campaign. As is always the case, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns regarding the session, the campaign we're playing, or the game, uh, please do not hesitate to leave a comment in the comment section of the video, and I will endeavor to reply in a timely fashion. In addition, you can find a link down below to the Dungeon Musings Discord server, where we have channels dedicated to this game, every other game on the channel, as well as um, a bunch of other great channels, uh, too. Uh, we have a, a, ch a fundraising, um, a charity fundraising uh, initiative called Heroes Save Villages, but at the time of recording, uh, the they've changed their service provider for donations, so we're still waiting to sort that out. Uh, we Hopefully, by the time you uh, see this, I will have sorted that out. I'm going to be planning on doing that this weekend. Um, SOS Children's Villages International is a terrific organization active in over 130 countries benefiting over 80,000 orphaned and abandoned children and to date this year we've raised a little over $4,000 I believe for it so it's an enormous amount of generosity demonstrated by the Dungeon Musings community and uh, I'll get that sorted out soon as a small way of saying thank you we have uh, charity raffles that come off once every uh, four months uh, once every three months and our next one will be on December 1st although we um, I need to sort out this uh, donation thing before we can do that. Uh, last thing I will say is a huge thank you to our players. <laughs> so, Robert, Will, and Carl, who has uh, departed us, uh, thank you so much for playing today, guys. This is a great reason to get up early. Roll some dice. Congratulations on defeating SeaTech. It was a lot of fun. Nice. It was a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it does. Three damn times. Three tries. Yeah. Third time, so, so lucky. So for those listening at home, thank once again, thank you so much for joining us. We hope we gave you a few hours to take your mind off of the troubles of our world and think about the troubles that our heroes in the t jungles of Tule keep getting themselves into. And until we see you again, stay safe, stay healthy, and happy gaming. <laughs>